It's time for Twig This Week in Google. Stacey Higginbotham's here. Aunt Pruitt. Jeff Jarvis. What the heck happened to Netflix? We'll talk about that. What do you do if you use Insteon? It looks like it's gone for good. And the company that makes vodka out of thin air. All that and a lot more coming up next on Twig. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. This is Twig. This week in Google, episode 660, recorded Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. Welcome to Pound Town. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by Policy Genius. If someone relies on your financial support, whether it's a child, aging parent, even a business partner, you need life insurance. Head to policygenius.com slash twig to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. And by Buck Mason. Buck Mason's clothes are second to none. Once you try Buck Mason, they'll become your go-tos too. Head over to buckmason.com slash twig and get a free t-shirt with your first order. And by Blue Land. Stop wasting water and throwing out more plastic. Get Blue Land's revolutionary refill cleaning system instead. Right now you can get 20% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash twig. It's time for Twig, the show where we cover everything but Google, the Google verse, the Twitter verse, the Metaverse, and all the verses with Stacy Higginbotham from Stacy on IOT.com at Giga Stacy, keeping up with the uh, of keeping up with the Higginbotham fame, and <laughs> oh, a right. lovely look at that lovely cup of tea. You know, it's interesting because I'm sitting right next to a guy who's got a lovely cup of Joe. Look at this, this is coffee, Aunt Pruitt. Look at that. Same cup. Mm, Only his is a lot coffee. larger. Oh, she did find my glasses. <laughs> oh, my glasses I have fell two off. cups. Sorry. Oh. Which one's Aunt Burke, size? can you get me the cup that Russell was using? Because I, I want, I mean, if you're all going to have white cups, I want, I want my own. Also with us, Jeff Jarvis, professor. I have no cup. You have no cup. <laughs> professor, there you go. He's got Starbucks. There the Leonard go. Tao Professor for Journalistic Innovation at the Craig, Craig Newmar Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Of New okay, York. Aunt, your cup next to my cup. <laughs> Something wrong with this picture. Oh, no. it's, it's Goldilocks. It's my little, this cup's too my small. little tiny the size cup. size of each of your arms. The comparison <laughs> for a lot of different things, sir. <laughs> what, one but of I these things is Breville. not like the other. Wow. my Breville coffee. Oh, gosh. Cheers. So good. Cheers to me. I think if you have a cup like this, you have to go. Some, somebody needs some infrared. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, and I'm not going to ask. All right. Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson reference. Oh. Oh, you're talking about uh, the new All the Rage. Oh, no. We're not going there. <laughs> Just, it's too early. You know what? The only thing, I'm not going to say anything, but the only thing that was funny about that whole thing is that it was, it was a bridge too far, even, even for Kid Rock, that was a bridge too far. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, ooh, bad, bad day. Bad, go, no good, terrible day for Netflix yesterday. They had to announce for the first time ever a loss of subscribers. Not a huge number, 100,000 subscribers, but it sure killed the stock. You sure that was 100,000? Uh, sorry, 200,000. 200, All right, well, that's still <laughs> pittance compared to whatever millions... Uh, they have, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, Wall Street's saying they may lose up to two million by July. I don't know where that number came from, but that's apparently part of the reason behind the freakout. It's kind of to that, me, and the fact that it's for the first time ever that they lost subscribers. So everyone's right. like, "Oh my god!" It's a real measure, though, of how Wall Street just wants in, in if uh, you know internal growth. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. here's the here's the graph from Axios. Actually, this is uh, Aaron Davis at Axios did this chart of uh, percentage chain and change in global streaming customers. Ten percent, you know, ten percent, five percent, but always up, always up until we got to this one little red slice right here where it's down point one percent. I mean, mm. it's not the end of the world. All right. right. Netflix is saying uh, we're going to start looking at this is something Ben Thompson called for a few weeks ago. Ad supported. 
Mm -hmm. I don't want ads in my nope. Netflix. Not I happening. think that could go the other way for them, right? Uh, the stock, which had already been down 40% so far this year, it was down another almost 30%. Um, it's, I think, competition from Disney, right? HBO? It's competition from Disney, HBO. They put a lot of money into building content. And they also have been raising prices. They've had two price hikes in the last, what, that's, year and a half? That's what I was going to get to. What about inflation? You know, people aren't making as much money nowadays and they're just trying to cut costs. It is what it is. We did think, though, that in COVID, this was like heaven for streaming services, right? Because right. you're all stuck at home. Right. Um, it's Netflix model is tough, though, because uh, all the catalogs being pulled back by the various other right. streaming services who want it for themselves. They lost the office to Peacock and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so they have to Marvel. do, they have to, uh, yeah, Marvel goes, so... To Disney, so they have to do uh, original content, which is expensive. So they have to. I think that's the reason the prices went up. Netflix has 222 million paying subscribers. There might have been a little hint about this because last week Netflix said, "And we are going to get all of you freeloaders who are <laughs> who are borrowing your subscription from somebody else to pay." They estimate that's a hundred million households, thirty mm. million in the U.S. and Canada. That don't pay for Netflix but borrow a password. Yeah. It, that is an astonishing number to me. It's I just can't believe. I'm like, That's wow. Almost half I mean, do y'all have? Yeah. I pay for my own subscription and I do not share it. It's only shared in the house under last pass. <laughs> Nobody knows the password. I um, think my kids might be using my Netflix. Mm hmm. But that was originally, you know, they were in the household and then they went to college. Mm -hmm. So at that point I said, well, yeah, you can take it with you. Probably shouldn't have though, right? I don't and know. Now, by now they're all living, you know, living on their own. They probably shouldn't be using my Netflix, I guess. Yeah, I, I would assume. I do think it's kind of an interesting own, thing. Do, you, oh. do your own account if it were me. It's expensive. Well, so, <laughs> it's expensive, but it's also think about like cell phone plans. Like, are your kids still on your cell phone? Yes. Plan, you? Hardhead is not on my okay. plan anymore. Hardhead is on his own. You, you are hardhead. Is, was it when he turned eighteen? What happened? Yeah, he's in college now. College Does he have freshman. a job. He works. Yes, yeah, he so is. he can't afford to. My kids have jobs, so but I but I still pay. I pay. <laughs> I pay for everybody's cell phone. I pay for Lisa's ex husband's. Will cell you phone. adopt me? <laughs> I buy. Like, I bought your cell phone. Else. I don't pay for your service. You bought this one. Yeah. You bought Stacy's. I bought. Yeah. Do you Did use that? Mine? By the way, yeah. is that flip phone? Are you like it? I do. It? Okay. Good. Yeah, I like it. How about how about the Kobo? No. How about the Kobo reader? <laughs> okay, so I have to tell you now. I have a plethora of e-readers because for my birthday, my husband got me the latest Kindle. Oh, shoot. Because it's waterproof. Andrew and I have got to start now, to coordinate the gifts. Yeah, y'all have got to coordinate because now I've got three e-readers wow. and I only need one and I don't know what to do with them. Well, yeah, give it to your kid. Doesn't she want one? She will. She refuses to read things she, on Kindle. She likes paper. She is. She's analog. Yeah. yeah. Got awesome. a little hipster, hipster tween here or teen. Anyway, uh. I get, you know, if Disney Plus is also looking at ads, I feel like that's why we pay for Netflix and Disney mm -hmm. Plus. Uh, I had, I, yeah. I, Hulu had ads and I ended up paying for the higher tier because I don't want to see ads, especially right. in the early days of these networks where the ads are the same over and over and over mm -hmm. again. But what's, what's so important about this, I think, is that it's, you know, <sighs> the, the, the dial goes one way or the other, right? It's, everything was supported by advertising, everything is supported by subscription, and now it's going to go back. But, are they going to be able to get the ads? Uh, the ad market is shrinking. Um, I don't know. Actually, this is not. Actually, I have a number this week. Says this is a, uh, I don't know if you put this in or uh, Stacy did. Carl Bodie, who, uh, I, it's, yeah, I you used to work with him at a gig home. Of course, he's great. I enjoy, this is his Twitter th thread. It's a good thread. I always enjoy watching one-time innovators, a.k.a. Netflix, now huge and successful, pivot to turf protection. Mm-hmm. It always involves using all kinds of distorted logic to justify making their product worse to please investors. In other words, adding ads, I guess. Um, like here in the Netflix letter to investors where they claim the problem with password sharing. By the way, Carl points out, streaming executives used to love 
and noted it had no material impact on subscriber totals and revenues. That may still be true, by the way, because if somebody's sharing a password, do you think they're going to have, once it's revoked, go out and buy Netflix or just say, well, I some. don't no, no, some, some, but not all. That was always they the could, argument. They could turn that into a business model where I could create my couple own of bucks. club yeah. on Netflix and get a yeah. cut of convincing Ant to be on my yeah. group and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know I people are doing it. that. Uh, to meet investor demand, Bodie goes on. Is it Bodie or Bodet? <laughs> Short for Bodie. I said Bode. Okay. Carl Bode. So I'm like, well, your way is Have you different. ever met him? I don't know. In person? No. Oh. Yeah, so how would you know? Anybody she works with. He, yeah. he actually <laughs> lives in Seattle now, but um, I've never met him in person. I like his Twitter. We ought to have him on sometime. Uh, I absolutely. I've been reading him for years. I love everything he writes. It's great. Yeah, he's great. To meet investor demand Wait, for improve- He's been on the show, right? Oh yeah, he has. He was on. And I asked him how to say his name. Okay, but yeah. I forgot. So how- <laughs> oh, shocking! Oh, right. I think it was Bodie. I think that's why I say Bodie. To meet okay. investor demand like, for improve. Just Carl. <laughs> just Carl to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> To meet investor demand for improved quality, I'm sorry, quarterly returns at any cost under this lovely public model we've developed, the company starts to effectively self-cannibalize and make its product crappier and more expensive. Like newspapers. Price hikes, worse customer service, less features. It's it's fewer features. You, he needs your red ooh, pencil. Ooh, <laughs> Grammarly. <clears throat> Grammarly. <laughs> Grammarly. <laughs> Hashtag Grammarly. Sponsor. Sponsor. Well, that, yeah, okay. Cable companies spent the last few years winning, whining about how streaming password sharing <laughs> was... great reads today, Leo. <laughs> I did that one on purpose. What you do for a living? Cable companies spent the last few years whining about how stream. If I do it in a um, pompous voice, I never make mistakes. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Cable companies spent the last few years whining about how streaming password sharing was piracy. Netflix has increasingly been shoved toward that position by the market as well, despite the fact that it's, well, not true. Wow. Blah, 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 blah. But, but the, the he made the is, point. He made the point, which is what happens once you become successful, then it's all about covering your turf protecting your turf keeping your market share up well i well yes and i mean you have to keep innovating at a certain point that's hard there's only so many times you can learn and relearn yes that's and all the Wall cell Street phone demands makers. constant growth yeah you know when- this is why i don't have public money in my company i can just coast along delivering <laughs> a consistent product and i don't have to Casey, worry they're, about they're knocking at the door to give you millions no, no one has knocked on my door. <laughs> I don't even get stuffed ants in but, the mail. But if they were, you wouldn't take it. If they, no, I'd probably just sell out, I'll be honest. If someone yeah. wants to offer me a few million, I'd be like, yeah, yep. take it. Oh, no, <laughs> believe me, but it would be more than a few million. Come on, hold out. I don't think so. You know, I wouldn't want to stick price? around. What's your number? Oh, wait, no, no, wait a minute. You've got to stick around for three years. Three years. Isn't that Golly. usually a, it's like it's a, usually the, the, yeah. the earn out. Yeah. You got to stick around. For yeah. So I don't now how I much would, would you that. pay? You just wouldn't yeah, do it. I, I wouldn't. I just feel like. And you've got to make it grow in those three years to a certain. So Elon level. Musk comes along and says, yeah, Stacy, yeah. I want to buy Stacy on IOT. I will give you four point three million dollars. It's worth a tenth of Twitter. I mean, a thousandth of Twitter. I mean, a hundred thousandth of Twitter. <laughs> I would say, I mean, if I had to stay on for three whole years, I would say no thing. And grow it? No, thank you. No, you wouldn't do it. stressful. Yeah. You know, a couple years ago. What would I do with that money? Retire after three years. Right? Would you want to retire? I mean. What would you do if you retired? Would you garden? Would you make cookies? Yeah, I'm like, what would I do? Yeah. I I would probably go work for a policy I would, oh, I would work for a think tank. Like make something. the world be, be a better place kind of thing. Probably the same thing I do, but with resources to for be free. like. Yeah. I would be absolutely Screw lazy. the man. Yeah. Lazy and love it. If Elon said, you have to meet with me in person, would you then? <laughs> Elon wants his, his final uns. I am never coming back to the table. This is it. $43 billion. Although a lot of people have said, first of all, where is he going to get that money? He's have to sell a huge amount of. He's looking Tesla for it stock. now. Uh, went to Goldman Sachs and others. 
Some people are saying, well, you get some hedge funds involved. The problem is it ain't going to stop at 43. It's going to go closer to 50. I've seen a number of so-called experts like Jim Cramer say he's not going to be able to get the money. No one else is going to buy Twitter. It's not in play. Who would want it? Well, hold on. He wouldn't be able to get the money because he's trying to buy Twitter. But are they assuming the risk is him not being able to get the money back because he's not earning oh, enough off of Tesla? Yeah, well, he I uses would, or, his Tesla stock as the as collateral. security against yeah. it, and that is highly volatile. Okay. All right. Oh, interesting. That's what the risk is. Oh, okay. interesting. And Although, he's already borrowed uh, a huge amount against the Tesla stock. Right. Oh, didn't know that. Oh, yeah. So I'm, you know, I mean, we've talked about this probably beyond the point where it's interesting, but I'm just, do you think he was serious about doing it or? No. No. Why not? What does he want with Twitter? I mean, it's What's that- the attention he's getting? He, he's getting exactly what he wanted, right? But yeah. he doesn't need the right attention and ego, yeah. you know. Yeah, you don't need to actually spend money on something if you no. just, you know, shout loud enough about it, and you're Elon Musk. He doesn't need the Soros of Twitter. He just wants the attention. I mean, they were ready to put Soros. him on the board. <laughs> well, as a way to stop him from doing this, but yeah, you know, I I, I, I started filling things in in the, in the run out this morning, and I I I put the beginnings of Twitter stuff down under Twitter, thinking, mm-hmm. oh, surely we're past this now. No, there's surely still a not. huge amount. Kept going. No, Even no, uh, Ben Thompson has weighed in. April 18th, a couple of days ago. Back to the future of Twitter. This is, of course, we Ben mm-hmm. is one of our favorites. Strategist at Stratechery.com. Is um, it Ch or Ch? Stratechery? We say this every Str- time. <laughs> <laughs> if I believe it's Baudet. <laughs> it's pre- spelled stratechery, but it's pronounced Baudet. We need a, like a style, a pronunciation guide for this we show. Do, we do. But see, this is what's so interesting, Stacy, and you're discovering this now as a podcaster as well. Most of the time, all this stuff is just written. No one has to say it out loud. But as podcasters slash broadcasters, it, we have to say it out loud. And oftentimes for the first time it's ever been said out loud, except by the person's mother, so we have to fi- figure it out. That's why the for us the GIF versus GIF thing is so fraught. We have to decide how it's pronounced. And I'm going to say stratechery. I believe that's correct. Fair enough. Um, I actually choose words. Sometimes I catch myself saying, "Do I need to quote this person by name if I actually record the book?" Oh, interesting. Oh, ah, yeah. That's a. That's an interesting question. So um, I actually haven't read Ben's post. So he, he suggested breaking it up into a um, social graph company and an app company. I'm not sure that I really get what that means, but it's Ben, so we, pay, we talk about him. Um, so I guess the, the social graph is, is the thing that you sell to advertisers. It's the thing that people want to know. Hmm. Right. And there's a per user value that you can then move out. Right. Um, but but, 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 but the, what, what fills that social graph, what informs that social graph is the app. So if you separate the two, suddenly your social graph no longer has the value that it had. Well, that was, that's, that's the paradox of Twitter, right? When they, when they killed the API, the it API goes into my calls, friend Bill Gross sorry. in there when he tried to build monetization strategies on top of Twitter, and that's what scared them, and they shut it all down then. Do you think now in hindsight, so Bill Gross's plan, he owned TweetDeck. Actually, he owned a number, I well, think. Well, no, he was, no, he actually got stopped from it. He bought others, and then he was, he was, he was going to buy TweetDeck, Tweet Deck, and, they and then they swooped that. in and said yeah. no and bought it, and that's when he knew that it was screwed. So he, his plan, which was, a, I thought, quite clever, he's a smart mm-hmm. fella, friend of yours, uh, was to buy up all the clients and thereby, in effect, making his holdings more important than Twitter itself. And because everybody would use his stuff to get to Twitter, in a way, splitting the company along these same lines where, you know, That's Twitter still up, owns yeah. the social graph, but he owns the apps. And uh, it would be a way of, in effect, acquiring Twitter without actually acquiring Twitter. And, and they, could the have, they could have said that there's a cost to the API. They could have done that. They could have done a per user cost to the API. Did they make a mistake? Like they could have done a rev share. Because you just cut them off, basically. Yeah, they just cut, cut it off. And, and they cut off potentially the huge growth. Now... Blue Sky starts to go that way, right? Blue Sky says there's a there's a there's a uh, commodity list of layer of speech which wouldn't be just Twitter. It could be any other social network, 
and then you build stuff on top of that if, if, if you start to open source it. You could have had much more growth. People make fun of Twitter. Oh, it's just tiny. It just has 36 billion people. And you know, nah, 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 right? Um, well, it could have grown, but then trying to control the content would have been much more difficult. Uh, but as we can do on the Fediverse, if you distribute the content that way, it is controllable locally. So in some ways, that it, it off. It, it offloads the yeah. moderation problems in a way that, at yeah. least in the Fediverse, yes. works quite well. Of course, it's not as well, big as Well, it, it lets you choose your moderation model. Yeah. I'll take Leo's right. boring Twitter versus Ant's right. fun Twitter right. versus my grouchy Twitter <laughs> right. versus Stacy's nice Twitter. Smart. Nice Twitter. Smart Twitter. Yeah. Well, what was I going to... I was like, oh, God, it's going to be like Pollyanna Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Called it Stacy's moral panic Twitter <laughs> versus the no. Stacy's nerdy Pollyanna Twitter. I would submit that it is not, in fact, that's not why Twitter is not growing. It's not because there aren't a, a you know a variety of clients and all sorts of ways to interact with it. Not it's, today. I agree. It's the nature of Twitter. It's the two hundred eighty characters. It, it, it's just it's it, it's the personality of Twitter is not mass appeal like Facebook is. Not anymore. I don't think it ever was. Really? Was it ever? I mean, look, we're the wrong people to ask because you all love Twitter. Well, yeah, we're in the circle. In yeah, the, yeah, you're inside. Yeah, we're all those. I mean, I think there's there's actually a little bit of that because to be on Twitter, you ultimately have to have something to say that's interesting mm-hmm. to someone else on Twitter or a big enough group on people, right? Of yeah. people on Twitter. I, yeah. I think you're right, Facebook, Stacey. you just think, have to I have think... something interesting to say to your friends, right? Yeah. Or in your life. Or you report, you know, you're sharing something there. Yeah. Or in TikTok, you're making something. But in Twitter, you have to have an opinion. Well, speaking of yeah, opinions. Yeah, so I think a lot of people oh, don't want to share oh, their opinions to everybody. And that's fine. About this. Speaking yeah. of opinions, O'Malley had quite an opinion. Musk or not, Twitter CEO needs to go. Is that yeah, fair? What Burr got in it. Oh, I'm sad. He does here. not like Agrawal. Is, is, is that fair? Guy's I mean, been he's just hardly. been the CEO for like 10 minutes. Yeah. You know. Uh, Ohm writes, this 37-year-old is woefully out of place as a guy leading a company, trying to fight for its independence and remain a functioning entity. I mean, if what you Elon, look at the lineup, Musk versus Agrawal is, is not a great lineup. Yeah, poor, it's a little, poor guy, you know. Yeah. It's um, lopsided. I feel like Agrawal reminds me a little of Sundar Pichai, somebody who was a good soldier, operations guy, deep within the company, mm-hmm. who kind of rose perhaps beyond his skill set. Yeah, mm-hmm. kind of. He's well, Peter's principal. He's Peter's principal. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, look, Jack Dorsey couldn't solve it. Ev Williams couldn't solve it. Twitter is a tough nut to crack. Um, I don't see any reason. Why do you think Dorsey? Made Agrawal or the board. By the way, that's another thing that's coming under huge fire is yeah. the board itself. Dorsey said the board is dysfunctional, has always been dysfunctional. Dorsey, after he left, yeah. has lambasted the board. Sounds like this is a very poorly run company, <laughs> all in all. Oh, boy. Uh, but it's not uncommon to have like a CIO or CTO come in. And- well, Tim Cook's an example of where it really worked well. Right. He was an operations guy I, who, who made Apple I even bigger. I don't think they had a plan. I think... Dorsey left you know, uh, I, I abruptly, do think there's some. He? He, nobody knew he was going to Yeah, work. he left yeah. abruptly. This guy basically... I think they kind of were like, you want it? You want it? I can't. Who, who okay. wants this? He got the short straw. potato? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, I think they're... I mean, it would be nice if Twitter had like somebody with a visionary plan for what to do and who could communicate that clearly to both the employees, the board, yeah. and the masses. I don't think Agarwal's it, but I mean, oh, I, Ohm writes Agarwal. What do has, you do with something? What like do Twitter? you do? No one has been able. I mean, you could argue Jack Dorsey is a competent innovator. Uh, Ev Williams very competent. Mm-hmm. Um, Ohm writes Agarwal has been part of the underperforming Twitter establishment. For a decade, okay. and I've yet to hear any fresh ideas from him or the company. Tech media has lapped up a flurry of minor product tweaks and sees them as a season of change. I have read many articles about the Twitter CEO discussing censorship and freedom of speech. I was hoping that equal, if not more, energy was going to be spent by both the executives and the media mm. on the business of Twitter's business. It is, after all, a publicly traded company. 
He's just disappointed. Lacey, you think well, why not problem. just clean house? Because this sounds like just yeah. like any I other corporate um, yeah. shake up where they come in and take everybody out from the top and yeah. start over. Why not just do that? Is it? Well, you got to have someone with an idea. Who has an idea? Yeah. Jack does with Blue Sky. That's the thing. I think Blue so Sky. So why did he leave? Idea. I don't know. Couldn't get his way. I don't know. Right. Like, this guy is still yeah, alive. I think uh, Agrawal alive. is still s- encouraging. It's yeah. Oh, man, if the board of directors at Twitter is serious about finding a way forward as a standalone company, one that isn't being jerked around by a billionaire or Wall Street hucksters who call themselves activist managers, mm-hmm. in making a mm-hmm. bid for Twitter, Musk has given Twitter a chance to shake off its stupor, tighten the belt, and run leaner, faster, and further. And that starts with new leadership Right at the top. I can't disagree with them. Let's give it to That's Om. Harsh. Om, Malik Om should run Twitter. it. It's Om, easy Om, to Om, say. Om, Twitter. <laughs> Om, Om for Twitter. I'm like, it's easy to point all that out, but it really is like, what is the, and Om actually might have a, I would not be surprised if Om had opinions, thoughts on what to do with Twitter. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's just so hard to say. I mean, like, it's easy to be like, well, this guy's not doing it. And you like Blue Sky, but was there a revenue model? associated with it that oh, no it's, it's very unproven it's very it's very innovative and and, and not thought through and once you're that, public like you can't are. do that yeah. that's that's why dell went private he was like oh crap the yeah. cloud and edge computing and all this is going to eat our lunch if we stay out in the public markets let's take it private so so here's here's a parlor game do. so stacy um let's say that musk gets gets close and then a white knight arrives what technology company like should Google buy Twitter? What would Google do with Twitter if it had it? Facebook. No, no someone should take it. Work. Mm. They should take it private. Like Google's not. There's no model doing. for. We're saying is there maybe anybody you, out should, there who you could, could get a make crazy crypto crypt- nerd. Oh no! Is oh, it, what? Am I am I reading this wrong? Where it seems like Ohm and others are are speaking about Twitter as if it's just a failing mess. Yet at the same time. Any Twitter competitor that tries to pop up never even stands a chance. So, so why are Good they point. getting so much grief? They're doing something. And who right. says it has to be this big? I guess same as Netflix. Because right? they're public. Yeah. That's what public, Wall Street yeah. does. That's, that's kind of Wall why Street. you don't want to take their money. Right. Okay. I mean, that's what Netflix is going up against right now. Yeah. Well, good billionaire to take it private would be a nice thing. But Should uh, Jeff they want Bezos turn on their money? Maybe no. Jeff should buy. He didn't, I don't think he bought the post to make money. He bought the post to preserve yeah. no. a public forum that was very important. Uh, if yeah, he could. maybe he'd feel the same way. The problem is you still have so many problems with Twitter that no one knows how to solve. But Stacy's part of Stacy's point is that that's you're, you have problems based on the public market expectation. If you were private, you could set your own expectations, right? What was Twitter's revenue? Um, let's go back to their last financial. Trip. They had one profitable quarter, I think Q, <laughs> Q4 2021. <laughs> and then I don't, I think they didn't, I don't think they made a profit last quarter. As oh I my remember. God. Yeah, it's not good. They've <laughs> only made. Well, thank goodness for those 10,000 Twitter blue anything. subscribers that we are. <laughs> We're in the small, the few, the proud. Yeah. The Twitter blue. What well, is probably 10,000. Here, it's cheers. not very many. Cheers. <laughs> if you the proud, the Twitter blue. <laughs> cheers, cheers. Big cup, I mean, they, cup. they boosted their revenue by quite a <laughs> bit year over yeah. year. Revenue. Do you see a profit yeah, in there? Yeah, and gross profit. Well, let's go down to their EBITDA profit. It. So uh, oh, somebody's saying in the, in the IRC that... Uh, Elon wants to reinstate Trump. Is that true or that's just speculation? He hasn't said it, but it's presumed. It's, yeah, it's presumed. He's, he's sort of. Well, Who the whole cares? Speech, if it's legal, it goes up. So he's he's the says let's get back to the free speech uh, thing. Oh yeah. Plus plus the you know I I I I made some joking tweets about it and then I ended up on Fox News and Glenn Greenwald and Andrew Sullivan came after me. What? So all the tweet, all the, <laughs> yeah, all he, the had a, he had Elon a nice boys. busy week Wait last a minute, week. I missed this one. <laughs> he was all really busy the Elon boys. boys. Where should I go to find me. this? What was it? And, on? and the reason they're after me is because they want Trump to be back. Yeah, they want. I mean, the funny thing is, uh, you're against free speech. No, I'm not. You're just yelling at me all the time. You can yell at me. I'm not telling you not to yell at me. Go ahead and yell at me. I'm. How am I right. against free speech? 
Right. I, you know, I don't like Elon. I have my free speech, but you're yelling at me like I shouldn't have my speech because I don't agree with your speech. F you. So I said, here's what it was. I said, it sounds that, so productive. Yes. <laughs> well, here's what I said. It was the, it was it was halfway through the day of Elon. I woke up in the morning saying I'm going to edit my book today, and then this happened, and I and I can't like 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 for some stupid reason I can't help myself. I've got to tweet about this because I'm like the world. This is why expects. everyone should put away the Twitter right now. No. So. Um, I tweeted at some point midday. I said, uh, today on Twitter reminds me, it makes me, makes me think of the last night in the last Berlin nightclub uh, at the dusk oh. of uh, Weimar, Germany. You invoked well, Godwin's I Law. I, mean, I, I, was, I was actually invoking Cabaret, the movie. Uh, so they're all too stupid to but get it. It's one more step to the Nazis. I put it in there. Well, yeah. And they, they, you know, the oh, yeah. They went berserk. So, I so what, did they, what was twice. their response? Wait a minute. Fox invited you on to defend your tweet? No, 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 no. no. They quoted the tweet. Oh. I don't know what As show. As what? Saying what? I don't know. It was a oh, liberal professor. It was all, every case. Liberal if you, professor. If you look at me on Fox News, it's liberal yeah. New York professor. Yeah. Oh. We think he's you know Jewish. What, you know what New know. York we'll means. <laughs> you know what New yeah. York means, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Liberal New York professor invokes <laughs> Weimar Republic? I don't think their audience would know what that means. No. <laughs> uh, it's, and, likens and, you know, free speech and, uh, to Nazi Germany. I was likening it to... I mean, I even put up a clip from Cabaret, but they still didn't get it. <laughs> Too stupid. Well, you got to get so I'll, I'll get more now. I'll get emails and that kind of stuff now that will come from this. But F you all, you're just idiotic. So, so that, no, that's interesting, though. That means you have a huge amount of... Uh, a, people are very aware of you in the... <laughs> On the right. Well, what like happens when the, Andrew the Sullivan and Glenn Greenwald do it, that draws, that, that's, the, that's the bat signal. Ah, uh, yes. The boys and the bots. Yes. And, and, what, and I've learned now. Well, the good news is hours, Taylor Lawrence away. ran right by waving a flag and they chased yeah. her instead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. L- letting you off the hook. The hounds, right, exactly what the hounds followed the other rabbit. Yeah, now that I'm doing this, this will come back up for a while and somebody will send me some email saying, calling me. Whatever. So and fine. Taylor on the, in the Washington Post, uh, who she's great. I mean, I think we all it agree right. she's a very astute observer of social media. But did she make a mistake in revealing the identity no. of the libtards of TikTok Twitter? No, account? no, you no, cannot be an not. adult on the internet having creating an account that has real repercussions for people without experiencing setting yourself up for the same real repercussions. Yes. For so it was an anonymous account, but it was absolutely, uh, you know, Glenn Greenwald retweeted it, 1.8 million followers on uh, Twitter. Uh, Tucker Carlson would continually bring up clips from libs of TikTok. He would appear on his show anonymously. Anonymously. I mean, you see her face, right? She didn't, she didn't have uh, a I voice change to the voice changer, did she? Which would have been pretty funny. In any event, her identity wasn't uh, super kept secret, but it, but it, she was anonymous, and so uh, but she was revealed uh, through the repertorial work of uh, Taylor Lawrence and two of her colleagues at the Post. Um, although I guess that information might have been available in other places, and that was seen as doxing. But as Stacey just said, you do something in public that has public repercussions. You do it to other people, and then you say it can't be done to you? Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, James Fallows, reporter- who I admire greatly as a journalist, came in. There was a discussion among some journalisty online, and he just said, this is journalism, period. You know, it's shush. Yeah. It's not I mean, doxing. It's uh, reporting. It's reporting. So I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get the outline of this. So uh, it's okay to have an anonymous account on Twitter, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, this it, is the internet. And if, and if I had an anonymous account on Twitter or so, or somebody had anonymous, there's there's trolls who were attacking you, Jeff, and they were attacking me anonymously. If we found out who they were, would it be appropriate to dox? I don't want to use the word dox because that's loaded. That's Reveal problem. their that's identity in public. Depends on what they're doing. Okay. Right. Yeah. But, but so, what, so the case, thing that made no this okay this, this was this that she no was, that the, the, the person who owned this handle was politi- uh, making political speeches? Was, she was became harming people, a was public causing... figure. She became a public figure. I would, yes. I would say she became a public figure, and then by virtue of that, her actions 
created direct harm for people. So a teacher lost her job. Okay. Um, So once you have, like, if you're just saying something nasty and it doesn't cause harm, then, but in the American legal system, I mean, libel, slander, all of those things, and they are true. But she wasn't doing anything illegal. Right. She was doing something in public. And and to me, that's sufficient. That you, there is not, was it there's appearing, not a presumption of privacy in public. Was it? A, I do defend anonymity. I do think it's important for the vulnerable. But she was violating that for others, and then hypocritically saying uh, it shouldn't come after me. So she was doxing other people. She was causing people to lose their jobs. Well, she, she wasn't no doxing them. She was she was pulling them. And this is why the internet is such a scary place, and why people haven't really they don't understand that everything you put on it is searchable and findable and even weaponizable against them. Or what, so them, she was right? reposting TikToks mostly. I mean, it's that's the implication. Libs. Of she TikTok. was finding. I mean, yes, she would find people's TikToks. She would repost them under this thing, and then other people would Bring draw more attention them. to them. Right. Then it'd be and amplified by I mean, Glenn Greenwald. She would set loose the dogs and Tucker Carlson. Far right. Okay. Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. So it was if Taylor she, Lorenz that owned the anonymous account? I'm no, confused. no, no. Taylor Lorenz is a reporter who who revealed sense. her identity and was accused Have of some doxing. More coffee <laughs> you know, maybe we should trade <laughs> mugs. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I should give credit because Taylor didn't do this alone. She had reporting help from had a team. Allison Kreitz and uh, Razan Naklawi. Uh, at the Washington Post, but but it, 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 I, I, I don't want to leave this discussion before we. Yashan Wang's th- thread on moderation, I think, is relevant here. All right, I'll pull that up Be- because it's it's this back of the Twitter story. What he's saying, what Yashan used to run Reddit, and so from the voice of experience, he can say uh, Elon's in for a mess of pain running a social network, and he goes through this, I think, brilliantly. And he makes a few points, which I think are relevant to, 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 to TikTok as well. Is, you know, where, where are the rules? What are you enforcing? And one point he makes that I think is wonderful. He said, listen, all you people, you think that your stuff's getting taken down because of the substance of what you say. No. If you said everything you said civilly and nicely, nobody would take anything you say down. It's because mm. of your behavior. It's because you're being jerks and a-holes and awful mm. people, right? And that's what it is. And so we focus on this as left versus right uh, and we try to get all kinds of false balance going there. No, it's about awful behavior and where that comes from. And guess what? It comes from one place more than the other. And that's why that side is trying to say, you can't take down our stuff because that's our freedom of speech. How dare you? Right? Because what the, on the left, they say take down the hate speech. And then when the hate speech gets taken down, the right says, whoa, that was my hate speech. And so Yashan, I think, does a good job of saying of the, it's, it's the Mike Masnick rule, right? The impossibility of content moderation at scale. And and this is about a society trying to figure out what our standards and norms are, and we ain't there yet. It's complicated, clearly. It is indeed. Uh, I, I, I'll i just say I don't think Elon is worried about this because I don't think he really wants Twitter. Does he really want Twitter? What would he do with it? Uh, he knows how hard this yeah. would be. This is this is just a quagmire. He's got Tesla and SpaceX to run. Yeah, but he, he doesn't would, need this. I could see him trying to put people in place as a only because you think he's a goofball, CEO. right? Well, I mean, he's, he's he's a smart enough man to put all of those other things in place with SpaceX and Tesla. He's not out there building those cars or launching the the the, the rockets. But he's doing thing, two fairly he's, important he's things. things. But he's things putting the right people is. in place to make sure all of that stuff gets done. He's even got two, with all of his antics, no, no, and even he's with still skating on the floor by the, the SEC. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's he's doing still something. The batteries in. I honestly. It's very hard to tell with Elon. No one can tell what his motivations yeah. are. But I, it feels to me like he's just having fun. He's kind of trolling around. And well, he likes to I, he I, likes the attention. He yeah. likes to stir the ant's nest with a stick. He's like a kid poking the ant's nest. But I don't think he has any real ambition to run Twitter. That would be a very hard thing to do. Maybe he has enough ego to think he could solve all these problems. I don't know. That's, I think that's what it is. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Exactly yeah. What it is. And he's yeah. and he's troll. He's a troll. He's trolling. He's trolling. And that's the joy he has. Yeah. And 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 and. Um, you know, I think, and, and I want to be careful here, um, because by the, the way, somebody said who was really trolling is the SEC. This yes. is this yes. is all oh, yes. about oh, all about thumbing his nose. In the Ted it's, interview, yeah, he goes right after the SEC. Yeah, that's the whole thing. I think that's exactly what he's doing. Is saying you're going after me because what I said on Twitter. Well, let me. I'll buy Twitter. Then what are you going to do? Yeah. 
That's not By the dummy. way, wouldn't change. Uh, either he doesn't understand securities law at all. Right. <laughs> or he know this wouldn't change anything. Him owning the platform that he's pumping and dumping on does not change in any way the liability for pump responsible. and dump. Yeah, Maybe he, makes him more responsible. Yeah. He bought this, a he bought a platform just so he can pump up st- stock scams. You know, I, I want to be. I started on this road. I want to be a little. I want to be careful here because I think neurodiversity is really important, and we have a mm-hmm. lot to learn from mm-hmm. the neurodiverse. But he brought up Asperger's in his TED talk. Yeah, and I wonder. I wonder what how, what it was like to be Elon the child. I wonder because he talks in that about the difficulty of understanding signals and having to learn. And, and I would also caution fun of because he didn't. Know I would how caution to play the you game the way everybody else plays it. I would really caution you because everything Elon says is uh, performative. You not, think even that is? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, we don't know. That's the. I mean, it right. might not be. Right. We don't know. He might be coming yeah. from the heart, but so much of what he says is performative that I would not necessarily. So well, he's even claiming that. As, yeah. Who as, knows? As a as a as a which bail. is really insulting. Yeah. No, if that you're is, if you're a fan of neurodiversity, if you want to support it, it, for somebody yeah. to say, "Oh yeah, well I'm on the spectrum." So right, I was yeah. headed toward on the path of trying to give him some empathy, but okay, you pulled me back. From well, I just he may be, maybe he may be, but it would be the first time he's been <laughs> forthright about anything. Uh, I think this sounds a little bit like. More like I'm sleeping on the floor of the factory. In fact, he even brought that up at the TED talk. Yeah, that was a boy. That was that a was that a softball game? Yeah. Well, Chris Anderson's not a hard hitter. No. no. Uh, and it was exactly the audience. Boy, that's that's Elon's audience right there. Oh, I'm they, surprised. They lines. He, yeah, I'm surprised he didn't announce his NFTs. <laughs> uh, perfect place to do it. All right, let's take a break. Uh, now that we've offended pretty much anybody who's listening. Hey, welcome to Twig. Um, it's 420, by the way, in case you want to, you know, buy uh, any. Tesla I was stuff. like, no, it's only 250. <laughs> <laughs> 250 on 420. Hey, actually, I want to tell you about a really cool company. Uh, I think we've talked about before called Policy Genius. Do you know about them? Uh, if you're looking for life insurance, and you should be if you have a family, if you have kids, if the death of you, something happening to you, would be a financial problem for your loved ones, for rent, for mortgage payments, loans, education costs, everyday expenses, you need life insurance. You know, that was one of the, that's the first grown up thing I did when we had kids. I went out and got a life insurance policy. I still have one. Having life insurance through your job, you know, I hope you have it. That it's a nice benefit, but it's probably not nearly enough. More people, most people need about 10 times more coverage than their job offers to properly provide for their family. I also should point out, as I have learned, life life insurance gets a lot more expensive as you age. So if you are still, you know, starting out a family, it is better to get a policy now sooner than later. Policy genius is very cool. It's a one-stop shop to help you find the life insurance you need at the right price. You click the link in the description or you head to policygenius.com slash twig and you answer a few questions. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from my top companies to find your lowest price. And by doing this price comparison, I mean, this really saves you as much as 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Then the team of licensed experts at Policy Genius are on hand throughout the entire process to help you understand your options and make choices with confidence. So you're not you're not on your own doing this. The Policy Genius team though, I should point out, works for you. They're not working for the insurance companies. Whether you're just starting to shop or have questions about your current policy, they're independent advocates offering unbiased advice. That's super important. Policy Genius does not add on extra fees. They do not sell your info to third parties. You can really trust them. Just look at the reviews. Thousands of five-star reviews on Trustpilot and Google. They have options to offer coverage in as little as a week. Some without unnecessary medical exams. It's the easiest way. And the best way to get that life insurance. Since 2014, Policy Genius has helped over 30 million people shop for insurance. 
and placed over $120 billion in coverage. These these are the kings of this business. While you're there, Policy Genius has home, auto, disability, renters, and more. So it's not just life insurance, but I really want to I remind you that, you know, you may not want to think about it. You may put it off, but you really, if you've got a young, growing family, if you've got people dependent on you, you need life insurance. Head to policygenius.com slash twig. Get your free life insurance quotes. See how much you could save and get that advice from the independent experts at Policy Genius. Policygenius.com slash twig. We thank them so much for their support of this week in Google. I like this lower third. It's very simple. Just Policy Genius. Just Policy I love Genius. That. That's all you need. Policygenius.com slash twig. So we do have a sponsor, Grammarly. Uh, we've talked about it before, mm-hmm. that uh, does grammar checking. Um, I was a little worried when I thought saw that Google Docs is going to start doing grammar checking. Then I started reading some of the things <laughs> Google Docs recommending, and I realized there's always going to be a place uh, for Grammarly. Have you played yet with the Google Docs uh, grammar checker? No. How I do tr- I turn it on? I trust myself. You'll get a purple I mean, like- squiggly line. I guess I I'm use Grammarly, so I I don't. Yeah, know it's better. Docs trust is. me. Uh, um, let me see if I can find one example of Google Docs. Where do you turn it on? It's a Tools? purple line. I don't. I'm not getting the purple lines. You must have to turn it on oh, somewhere. Okay. Spelling um, and grammar. Yeah, there it is. That's well, it. It's all. Well, I guess There's, I'm just too damn perfect. You're I perfect. Got any perfect lines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I not bookmark this? Right. Uh, hey, Stacy. They're doing tone recognition. Grammarly does tone recognition. Yeah, but, the, but Google Dots. Informal. Yeah, which I like. Uh, let me see if I can find. Uh, maybe it's in this really even has right emojis, now. which is so silly. <laughs> I found one. Oh, I a couple of examples that were just really ridiculous. But now, see, I didn't bookmark them. So never mind. And I can't find it. I can go open a Google Doc and see. Oh, it was just it was silly. I'm in one now, and I have stuff. The couple purple squiggly lines, and I don't agree with them. Oh, I get purple squiggly lines, but that's that. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah, here we go. This is from Motherboard. Okay. It's all synonyms. Here's from, from Motherboard. In there. The title is Google's AI-powered inclusive warnings feature is very broken. So, uh, in this case, Motherboard writer Lorenzo Franceschi Bicchiari typed annoyed. Google said, nah, make it upset. <laughs> make it angry. Ah, okay. Gonna, you say this about a woman, that's going to piss them off because, no, I'm angry. <laughs> this is worse, though. Social editor Emily Lipstein typed in Motherboard, the name of the website, and Google popped up to tell her she was being insensitive. You motherboard. Some of these I mean, words may not be inclusive to all readers. Consider using different words. Okay. <laughs> Journalist Rebecca Baird Remba tweeted an inclusive warning she received on the word landlord, which Google suggested she change to property owner or proprietor. <laughs> <laughs> which, I mean, that's, I guess, is it the same? It may be the same, but what's wrong? Yeah. Is landlord, landlord, do we not say lord anymore? Lords and ladies? I still Maybe say that's landlord. the issue. I, I'd be curious if you typed in something like white knight or white hat. What would happen? There's always, you know, some risk. They talk about, uh, Google suggested Martin Luther King should have talked about the intense urgency of now instead of the fierce urgency of now in his I Have a Dream speech. John F. Kennedy should have used for all humankind instead of for all mankind. And, um, well, <laughs> yeah, obviously. Okay, I understand. <laughs> Um, what makes a speech resonant often is when you, I mean, what makes good writing is when you know the rules, you break the rules and you yes. come up with, and a speech is yes. also very That's different a than a written. That's a good point. So uh, motherboard fed a transcribed interview of neo-Nazi and former Klan leader, David Duke uh, into uh, the inclusive editor. It got no recommendations, even though he uses the N word and talks about hunting black people, but Radical feminist Valerie Solanus's scum manifesto was got many edits. She should use police officers instead of policemen. Google notes. Even Jesus. <laughs> it's just stunt journalism. This is silly. All right, all right. Stunt journalism. 
By the way, you might not I'm, want to use the phrase stunt journalism and just <laughs> call it gimmicky. How about that? It appears judgy, Judgy. Stacey. You're judgy. It's judgy. <laughs> like all it, the, uh, It's a fun article, but you're right. It, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of. In fact, that's what Google says. We're still, it's an ongoing evolution, Google says. Uh, I made um, Simpsons book of quotations. You did? Twice. Homer uh, or Bart? No, it's not this one. I don't have this one. But I remember there, there were things where the editor, people were trying to turn it into the cliché. I said that, that that hearing Yoko Ono sing was like hearing a um, what did I what did I say Something like a, a uh, whale call? Uh, <laughs> no, it was, it was. I said it was like hearing a bald eagle being goosed. Uh, That's apt. That. Yeah. The other one was was that I said uh, I said. Um, Something about oh, who's the guy who used to that celebrity? Uh, John suggests, by the way, John suggests for more inclusivity, you call it a, a goose being bald eagled instead. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, what was what was his name who did uh, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous? Robin Leach. The Leach. Leach. Here we are at the Lifestyles of Jeff Jarvis's house. Oh, you do that. So too I, well. He called something tacky, and I said that was a case of the pot calling the kettle metal. Oh, I like it. And the editor wanted to make it black. And I said, no, you see, that was the... This, oh, that's, that's the play on words. Oh. I'm yeah. breaking the cliche. Oh, editors. <laughs> so I, I kept it in, and I won, and I made Simpsons quotations for those two. Wow. Yeah. Well played, Can you look sir. up and see if they have anything for me? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> Who's Leo Sorry, Leo. No, I'm not in there. I'll never forget when I've told this story before. My dad, when I was a kid, my dad was a professor. He got a letter saying, you have been uh, included in who's who. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you probably get that letter once in a while, too. No, I actually don't. And uh, for, for $55, we'll send you a copy of who's who <laughs> with your name in it. Which we, by the way, dad, I think he's wised up since, but he did buy and we and we had for many years the on our, oh our library shelf the who's who with oh Professor Leo F. Laporte my. in there. Yeah, I've never the met hope that someone at the cocktail it. party would say, "Oh, are you in that?" I'm in Dr. who's Laporte? who. Yes. <laughs> Kids today have no idea that it, there, well, there was a, a thing called who's who. Now you just Google it. They, right? have, they have no idea there was a thing called like a high phone book. Students. Who's who and I again. And I get those. I bet those letters get sent to proud parents all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Marquise, who's who? Scam artists still doing their thing. Yeah. By the way, according I to Marquise, who's the who? Book. It's, it's remained the standard <laughs> for reliable and comprehensive biographical data. So look at yourself up. Are you in it, Leo? Oh, do you Is think your you dad's can... still in it? How long do you get to be in it? Oh, if you if pay you could... to buy a book, I wonder if you can look it up. Look up somebody in, in perpetuity. I, don't, I bet you it's not online. Oh wait a minute, Marquis biographies online. One point six million biographies. It's not too. It's not too uh, restrictive. I guess. <laughs> Did you look down on the homepage? What, on the homepage of who's who? Of who's who? Yeah, yeah. Their featured listies spotlight. Listy uh, branding. No, no, okay, I went to marquiswhoswho.com. Yeah, that's, that's where, where I am, yeah. Oh, funny. Be part of Mark. Have you made strides in your career that deserve to be showcased to the world? Could you benefit from joining a notable network of like-minded, seasoned well, if so, professionals? Join Twitter. Are, you Are they looking seasoned? Seasoned. <laughs> Well-seasoned. Oh, wow. We should feed this to Google's grammar checker. Are you looking for an effective way to revive your professional reputation? <laughs> what? <laughs> revive your... Pro wow. Revive your professional... Oh, Dad. Oh, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Clout walked up. They said, hold up. Hold my beer. I'll be right back. Clearly, <laughs> this is beer. now Let's being aimed at people who are old and need to be revived. Yeah. Well, yeah, because the rest of us are online. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> we'll put you in a book that will be featured in libraries worldwide. And never opened. And never opened. <laughs> never opened. <laughs> True I that. Mean, okay. How do we get Well, Stacy, what happened to Insteon? Do we know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't know, and it we will never. Well, Is this like the work. Wink fiasco or worse? 
No, Wink actually was purchased and people talked about what happened. So Wink still exists. And if you pay money. Yeah, that's Wink the problem is works. that you had to pay for it. But Insteon. Yeah, people pissed about that. Tell me what Insteon, Insteon is. So on Friday, Insteon is a smart home hub. It's been around since 2005. One of the first. Proprietary. Yeah. Yeah. Proprietary yeah. mesh network technology works really well. People love it. I cannot tell you how many times people like send me emails about how Stacy, why are you wasting time with smart things or home, home assistant? Get Insteon. It just works. It's rock solid. People love it. So what happened is on Friday night, I started getting emails. People realized that their app wasn't working and their hub was down and they were like, what the heck is happening? It's been pretty clear for the last couple of months that Insteon has been having some troubles. Uh, and financial apparently uh financial and they stopped supporting some of their stuff they had some cloud outages but they didn't really communicate and then they came back up so people thought this might be just a big cloud outage but it turns out that it hasn't yet turned back on Uh -uh. um and i went through because i had gotten enough of these emails and started looking and the people affiliated with insteon Many of them are no longer with the company, and those that used to own the company are now denying that they have any oh, dear. business with the company. So I found Rob Lilliness, oh. who is the CEO of Smart Labs, which is the company that in 2017 invested. Well, Rob's private investment fund, Richmond Capital Partners, created Smart Labs and invested money into it to buy Insteon, the assets, and wrap that all up. So they had this smart home website that sold Insteon gear. They had the Insteon stuff. Um, And he has scrubbed all mention of Insteon from his LinkedIn profile. And as of now, he no longer has a LinkedIn profile. Mm. Mm. He just took that sucker down. But of the five people, (laughs) yeah, of the five people I've got a book he can bite into that might help him. (laughs) Yeah, revitalize. <laughs> sounds like the Cleveland Browns Career. to Baltimore. Yeah, holy cow! So I, he did actually respond to me on Tuesday, and he said he's not affiliated with the company, but he didn't answer any of my questions, and that was the only response he has. But he was clearly used to be affiliated with the company, so it's anyone's guess what has happened, mm. and people are pissed. Hmm. So if you bought an Insteon hub and have been powering your smart home with Insteon, they had an app and everything, right? Um, yeah. N- none of that's working anymore. Well, so Insteon has local control. <clears throat> if your hub was oh, programmed, okay, this is why people love it so much. If your hub was programmed, your timers and anything on the hub will still work. If you okay. want to change anything, though, you need the app. Hmm. Now. My thing of the week is actually a very comprehensive guide that we put together on what to do if your Insteon thing has failed. But Save we that. We'll talk that. about that then. Okay. okay. So there is hope. No. It's- there's not hope for Insteon, but there's hope for your particular <laughs> home. There is something you, you can product. do. Yeah. Okay, good. Was it, uh, the, was it the problem with Insteon that it was proprietary and that Zigbee and Matter and all of these things have just kind of eclipsed it? I think yes and no. I I think it was, I mean, the fact that it was proprietary and it worked really well was great. I think the fact that you it was a pain to buy and you need a professional installation, all of that is hard. And we've seen the smart home eclipse kind of the professional CDA type installers. Yeah. And then things like Matter coming on didn't help it. Was Instian a member of the Matter Coalition? I don't believe so, no. Yeah. But so. matter could theoretically help if you had a situation like this going forward because you would have local control right. with matter. Right. Theoretically, when it comes out. Was it the Sonos of IoT? The Sonos of IoT? Well, Sonos is still around, so let's not. <laughs> well, I know, yeah, but Sonos no, in the sense that oh, it worked well, but then other, a lot of other things came out. They got eclipsed. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah. You got eclipsed, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably in and, and Sonos is expensive. Now Sonos is still investing in things and, and having lawsuits and Yeah, Sonos is gonna be around, I think. I think they've decided to, you know, put but it does in some respects it kind of does sound like the Sonos of IoT. 
in some respects. All right. Well, we'll find your work. Or we'll get your workarounds a little later in the show. While we're on IoT, can I can I suggest one? Yeah. Because I, I want to hear Amy. Talk, uh, Amy. Stacy. What am I saying? Amy. Talk about this. Um, the puffs of air. Line eighty two. Have you gone into this yet, Stacy? Here's the video. Uh, going Let, me show down you. To Let me show you Google's little signals. Oh, yes. Little signals. Here you go. Watch the video. We'll all watch and learn. At Google, we like to rehearse the future. Did, wait a minute. Did she call it Google? <laughs> She's got Leave an accent. Be. Leave it be. Let me hear it again. At Google, we like to rehearse. Google? Rehearse the Google? future. Google? In this collaboration with Matt Project Office, we have explored how technology can support us in the background of our day-to-day lives. A little Irish. Oh, she's Scottish. Through the lens That's of Google. ambient computing, Google. Okay. we're imagining Google. new ways to interact with technology, using less of our attention and allowing us to have moments of calm. The calming accent. Mm-hmm. Little Signals is a family of unassuming but charming objects that share notifications and information by engaging with our senses in more nuanced ways. Wait a minute. Little unassuming objects <laughs> that engage our attention? This is this from the company that brought you Google Glass. So. What? Yeah. Can't be is this, if it's is engaging. This, right? Is this... Blue sky? Are they gonna? Are they doing it? Or, well, let's listen. No, no. This is this has been around oh, it's, for it's a while. Play. This is the whole concept well, has? of ambient information delivery. Yes, but keep going. This is a lovely using sound, movement, and visual cues we can subtly perceive. A soft shadow, a friendly tap. What? A reassuring like sound. A subtle indicator. I'd never, I'd <laughs> never hear any of this. Never see any of it. A gentle motion. <laughs> they use familiar patterns to calmly convey information and keep us in the loop. The Giga Loop. We're all in the Giga Loop. Gentle nudges at the right time in the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Dialing up only when okay. necessary. If you're just listening, it is not nearly as hysterical. There are little objects These tapping little signals on things. These are thought starters of how we can foster new behaviors and relationships with our oh, technology. Look at that. I turned it upside down. Working in harmony with the objects we already love in a little way. Beep. <laughs> So is this so Google this is, So there's a whole design philosophy. It's called This is what I want to hear, Stacy, on this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And so we've had people. So this has been all the way back. So all the way back to like 2010, 2008, we were seeing people develop connected objects. Like, so one of the first ones that I recall hearing about was like a an umbrella stand that would just light up softly if rain was expected. So as you walked out the door, your your umbrella stand would glow, Don't and you'd be like, "Oh, me. I should take an umbrella." Um, and that that was one of the like, the, it, and there were lots of ideas around products like this, and most of them have failed. Um, Good night lamp was a wonderful one that is you can kind of it's been developed into other things, which is like just by turning on a light, it would share it would turn on a light somewhere else with like a connected other person and they would just know that you were home or that it was like a way to connect with people from far away. And the idea here was that you wouldn't have a screen. You would have some object or device in your home that would give you some sort of indication that you could pay attention to in a way that was not like a notification screaming at you. And these objects really fetishize things like light, sound, motion as a way to get your attention. Um, and a lot of them are nice, but... So look, you can build them yourself yeah. using an Arduino and uh, they have the 3D printer uh, models. So these are the three things we saw, which is the thing you push down. I could use it for my father to remember to take his pill and then plop down. Well, the that was an interesting one. It has a little, it's a little, it looks like the hands of a clock, but instead of being the hands of a clock, it taps on your medicine bottle. But, okay. It taps on the medicine bottle, too. but how, yeah. how audible is that? You know, you tap it on the medicine bottle. Well, the idea around the, them is they, they come to your attention when you need them. And so in that case, mm-hmm. probably you were looking at something like light triggered the sensor to indicate go, that light and time, mm-hmm. for example. So opening your medicine cabinet gave you that 
notification, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm okay. sorry. I'm trying to. Uh, the, it no, said, it's, it said it, there, and there's launch experiment, but all it's doing is showing me that same video again. So I wanted to see what the experiment. Oh, here. Your explanation design. helps. And you Stacey. see them. You see these things getting built into like people like tying their Philips Hue lights to various pieces of information and <coughs> sorry, lights changing colors to like tell you something has happened. And but. And that's just ambient information delivery. And it's really popular. And it's actually, I've set up a bunch of them in my home. And it's actually mm-hmm. quite nice. Oh, so to- tell us what you I like, like the idea of like like this. Yeah. I like the idea well, so of this, I but of... I feel like I would struggle with, with catching. You sure. Know, what, so so here's, a little, in the day. here's a little air so, thing. It interacts with this. Pulses of air move nearby items to attract attention. So it'll blow, wiggle, or spin. Mm-hmm. That's an so example. like something like this, you could use it for something that's not imperative that you notice it right away. Okay. But that's like right. okay. a good example would be something like quitting time, actually. Okay. So here's like it could this way if it's five o'clock and usually you want to be like you want to have a reminder to yourself to get up and stop working. Right. That okay. could start blowing around five o'clock and you could be working and you'd notice it and you'd be like, oh, OK, yeah, it's time to go. But it's less intrusive than like yeah. a bell going off. Right. I like this um, one. OK. This is kind of interesting. This is this one's called movement and mm-hmm. seven pegs that graphically represent information like a calendar or timer through their height and motion. The pegs work individually or as a group and are tapped for simple input. That's really interesting. I mean, they're just, yeah, these are very interesting. You no, know, these are super Things don't fun. have to shout and at like, you. They they can just hint at as normal environmental things do. Mm-hmm. And like this, this, this one with the haptic feedback is fun. Like I've seen things like that. Um, I've seen projects like for bicyclists, like little vests that people wear with haptic feedback, where mm-hmm. the closer a car gets to you on a bicycle the the more the haptic feedback happens, like the harder or the faster the percussive mm-hmm. motion would happen. So you'd feel the car coming up behind you. So you'd know it was there, but it wouldn't it would build slowly, presumably. Or if it built too fast, you'd figure it out and you'd be like, I should swerve. Oops, sorry. This one's really interesting. Oops, I should swerve. Tap makes use of surfaces. This is the one that was tapping on the medicine bottle to create sounds that act as notifications. A stronger tap means more pressing news. So you mm-hmm. you could now you can download these as as little there's little zip files. Is this a script? Uh, it's an STP. Oh, he's gonna make one now. Here I comes. think we could experiment with little signals. You could, yeah. He's firing you come up the here and walk you through how to make the air object. Yeah, this doesn't look so quite so. <laughs> you need a 12 volt computer fan, an Arduino, a transistor, a resistor. So Jeez, these are God. these are do it yourself projects. Yeah. And like the air blowing might be fun. Like, let's say you've got a sensor tied to your plant that is like when it needs water. What if you start seeing the leaves blow and you're like, oh, that means it needs water. Hey, I think hey, that's cool. me. So instead of having a Every- boxing glove that hits me, Stacy, <laughs> <laughs> you could have something could that just blows in my ear. Urgent tapping. Just blows in tap, my ear. Tap, <laughs> tap on your forehead. Yeah. <laughs> Boop. I thought we solved that with ant. Can have a Just booper? Wait. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so I'm trying to find a, a replacement. Uh, yeah. I would like to build one of these. This is cool. Maybe Burke can build us some of these. Because I mean, there's some soldering. Yes. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's super. Like, and there's code. These, so you can write your own code. Huh. It's neat. Wow. And I thought we'd we'd have this sort of thing in more places, but until we have a truly open kind of format for communicating information and then the end result, like the, the uh, what's it called, the execution of a puff of air or whatever, there's no way to build something like that that's really universal. So you get these like single use products that are real gimmicky feeling and it's kind of sad. Why does this look like Visual Basic or something? This is JavaScript, but what it looks like you could do, um, for it's got an API. You could query a weather service for a forecast. So that's what this code does. They uh, they get the forecast, and then they react to the forecast by doing something. Uh, you know, depending on which 
yeah. thing you're connected to. I used to. to have a light in my closet that if it was below freezing, it would turn blue. So when yeah. in the morning when I went into my closet, it would be blue oh, if it that's was below neat. freezing. Smart. Oh. Can it in turn do something else? If I hit if I hit the red thing down, yes. does it you know send my doctor a notification? Yes, he does yeah. pills. Or sure. It's all programmable. So in this case, if you've set it uh, to something, to whatever the trigger is, it'll turn the fan on. It'll blow on you. <laughs> I might find that irritating. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the air object. So there's there's code for all different kinds of objects. This is actually the one I'd be most interested in is this little tap object. Yeah. That's the one I want to play with. Plus, it seems to operate on two axes. Yeah. You go down and in. Oh, this is the same one. This is the air... Here one. Oh well, I'm gonna have to. I want. Maybe we should build one of these. It'd be kind of fun. Build it, program it. Yeah, and then give control of it to Stacy. Yeah, on the set. And we then, could. Yes, then let me have it. And, so, and we, actually, all you need is it's on the table, and when you start to say something bad, she just taps like a like an insistent ant. Yeah, and I could put a little <laughs> yes. finger on it, like and it's like it's tapping. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to there's a site uh, called comtech.com. It'll talk about some of these sort of things in other places that you see this developed. I've had a person on the podcast talk about this. So here's a calm it's, tea it's kettle, nice. a calm office window, a laboratory sign, a calm Roomba. Yeah, I like this idea. I mean, it. I mean, there's a reason why these alerts coming from your assistants and your phone are loud and annoying. I mean. Otherwise, you might miss it, <laughs> right? Well, this would be very permissioned. This is, I'm going to pay attention to you at, a, at a, an agreed-upon level. I'll, 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 when I see the plant, um, plant's leaves going like that, then that's fine. I've, I've agreed to that, and, I, and I'll do something, and that's that. It's nice and simple. It's easy. I like that, that idea. It's not intrusive. It's not it's loud. Cool. It's not yeah. in your face. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you, Stacy, for explaining it. Yeah. Should we build some stuff? If you want fun? to know more about this, uh, Amber Case is the woman who you should follow. And you have some, like, where did you get that blue light? How did you, did you build that yourself or? Oh, I programmed a Philips Hue using IFT. Oh, duh. <laughs> of course. That was yeah. hard. Um, no, I've done stuff I like programmed that. programmed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Kevin, Kevin actually did something. He programmed a LifeX bulb um, tied to the price of Bitcoin, which is, again, another example of doing something like this it's calmer calm calm very calm i like it mr beast gonna be on the cover of the rolling stone rolling stone wow. rolling stone uh no rolling stone is reminds me of the kevin rose cover of business week <laughs> yeah yeah it's kiss of death isn't it so if you get the cover yeah. of sports illustrated yep that means right. you're gonna be traded right or you it's break done. a leg you usually. break your leg <laughs> um no, we don't wish ill to Mr. Beast. No, Rolling Stone no, fact, will what debut. What I love about this is it's not just Mr. Beast; it's creators. It's really it's creators kind of called the Creator Issue. To creators. This uh, this uh, is uh, because of Penske Media, I guess. Yes, it is. And they're going to do. A, it's almost like a new VidCon. They're they're you know VidCon loves creators. They're going to do a live YouTube. event in yeah. May. Yep. Yep. In Los Angeles, sponsored by Meta, that will bring. It's kind of a VidCon. It'll bring together hundreds of creators. Uh. Oh, Jan Wenner's still there? Oh, no, Gus Wenner. It's Gus his Wenner. son. Oh, yeah, it's like, son. What? Yeah. Wenner called the inaugural creators issue a crescendo moment for the company, which plans to invest heavily in covering creators as part of youth culture moving forward. Yeah, Rolling Stone covered music exactly. as part so of the I youth culture. This, it, this is the new youth it, culture. It, it opens the arms wider to respect um, the greater creator culture. Bella Porch, yeah, TikTok like star, will be interviewed. A deep dive into black creators. Um, this is interesting. Rolling Stone. In I February, that Rolling owns Stone... half of South by Southwest. Too, well, an and guy. listen to this. Last month, they acquired a majority stake in Las Vegas' Life is Beautiful Music Festival. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's a Rolling, lifestyle brand. Rolling Stone Public... Uh, no, it's owned by Penske. Mm, I don't think so, private. no. Yeah. No, it's owned by Penske Media. Okay. Monthly print magazine is, still has a circulation of half a million. Oh, no. That was uh, that was last year. 
It's currently 425,000. Digital audience, 22 to 28 million monthly uniques. So very interesting. They're quite happy with those numbers. Yeah. Goodness. And by the way, so I put this, this is a Sarah Fisher story from Axios. Uh, this morning when I was going through and putting stuff up here, Axios was just jammed this week with good stuff. Good stuff, yeah, I agree. I it's funny, you can Sarah kind of... Fisher's very good there. You can kind of tell when, a, when a, something clicks into gear. And yeah, I had a lot of Axios stories bookmarked as well. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's take a little break. Are you okay, John? I, I heard you moaning. <laughs> Am I wrong? It was his ambient I uh, heard it too. board. <laughs> I heard, ah! Uh. <laughs> I heard it too. I mean, it's not me, but he's right? smiling. He's okay, smiling. He's, smiling. he's okay. good. Um, it's okay. I am. I would love to get Burke. Is Burke out there? Every time I have an ad, I poor Burke has to go find something for me. In, in there's a box of clothing in my office, Burke, or right, just inside the door on the right. That box of clothing. It's my Buck Masons, and I've been saving this. I've been dying to open it up because I have. You like Buck Mason, right? Yes, yes. I yes. have some Buck Mason pants. They're not exactly sweats. They're casual pants. They're but they're heavier. I love them. My Buck Mason sweatshirt's the best made sweatshirt. Really good quality Wait, this, sweatshirt. It's an ad for Buck Mason. Oh, this, We're in the ad now. Okay, yes. sorry. <laughs> I know it's confusing. <laughs> As seen it's like, there on the, the lower third really on the screen. Stacey, you might want to stick around for this the, one. The words weren't there yet, Ann. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, we all have, I think you probably do too. You go to your closet and you, there's your favorite shirt, your favorite mm-hmm. pants, your favorite jacket. And you just wear that to, till it falls apart. No comment. These are my Buck Masons now. I have a sweater. What was where what, we were talking about this on an episode? Uh, the sweater. It's the sweater. It's a beautiful cotton fisherman sweater. It's so gorgeous. The the jeans, the shirts. It's the stuff you wear all the time, and it's increasingly for me. It's Buck Mason, grown and sewn in the U.S. I love that. Right. That's cool. That's U.S. Cool. cotton, U.S. manufacture. Their clothes are timeless and very well made. I'll tell you what: a lot of times you get clothes and they're not so well made. Uh, these are these are going to last. It's good that you're, these are your go tos because they're going to last forever and they're they're timeless. They're not going to go out of style. It fits. They fit beautifully. Jeans, shirts, jackets, so much more. Is Burke Burke's not here? Somebody will somebody go in my office and get me my Buck Masons, please. I love the tailored look and fit of the t shirts. Actually, quality T-shirts, a lot of times you get a T-shirt, they're just falling apart and cheap after three washings. Not Buck Mason. They look good and feel good at wash after wash. And they invented the curve hem tee. Uh, GQ called it the best T-shirt in the game. It's really nice. It's really nice. The fit, the finish, the quality. Thank you. Oh, 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 I'm so glad. These are the... These are the navy versions of those green sweats I was talking about. And just because you got up and did that, I'm going to offer these to you. Would you like these? Please, thank you. Oh, shoot, he accepted. <laughs> <laughs> you know they're not going to fit your massive thighs. No, look but I those. will try. Yeah, try. <laughs> I, look at that. Doesn't that look these how feel good look too. at the look at the they waist fit his band. arms. Yeah, these oh, might, you can wear them. Like, these are these are really well made. Yes, I'm kind of blown away by these. Here's a, okay, you can't have this though. I'm thinking about the t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, they're That's really well made. Uh, quality. Yeah, you wear a lot of black t-shirts. First thing I do is I always check the stitching in the inside. Yeah, you can tell these are well made, and I love it that they're made in the U.S. This is the Darby Venice Wash Vintage Thermal Surplus T. And the thing is, it's, it's going to wash and wash, and it's never going to wear. Oh, yeah, I wear these. This is So when you were a kid, maybe you did this with your kids. I bet you Jeff Jarvis is old enough. Did you have, when you got home from school, did your mom say, get out of your school clothes, get into your play clothes? Did, you would presume that I went out and did something kids would do and like play outside. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll save I you. Mama you do that Pruitt to watch did TV. that all Did Mama time. Pruitt, she said, get out of your yeah, school yeah, you clothes. you should have asked Aunt that question. Because yeah. you, have, you have school clothes, right? <laughs> but you're going to go outside and play. That's right. Get in your play clothes. These are my, this is when I get home, I get out of the suit oh, and I get man. in them. Yeah, see, that's a, you got right there when I'm going to get into my play clothes. Those are my work clothes. You got this. Hand yeah, I know. You live in your play me. clothes. Yeah. yeah. These feel good. Isn't that nice? <laughs> All right, so we're going to. They give also you a- have tall, by the way. Oh yeah, 
uh, you can't bronze. have these back. Sir. You can, you know what? You can have okay. them. It's okay. <laughs> Seriously, if they fit you, take them. That's fine. Thank you. I have. I'll get more because uh, actually, I think I'm on my third or fourth order. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep getting more Buck Masons. BuckMason.com slash Twig. You'll get a free T-shirt with your first order. B u c k m a s o n. BuckMason.com slash Twig. Get that free T-shirt with your first order. But, you know, I don't even have to say, you know, get something free or get a discount or anything because, uh, trust me, you will be so glad you get these shirts and you will love them and, and pants and jackets and uh, jeans and everything that you're just going to you're going to be a Buck Mason. This is your go to from now on, just like me. And me. Isn't that nice? Do yes. you have these? These feel so. <laughs> so I have the green ones of those. That's why I'm willing to let you have those. I love them. They're heavy. They're comfy. They're going to look good on me. They're going to look good on you. As opposed to you, Leo. I didn't say that, but you did. <laughs> they look good on me. They look good on me. You know what? It's nice they fit. It's hard yeah. for me to get clothes that fit because I'm fat. Yeah. You, it's hard for you to get oh, clothes that fit. Oh, they have women's yeah, clothes, y'all. Oh, yeah, did I do. not mention that? Of course they do. No. Buck kind of implies like, it's a guy. It's for a guy. Buck Mason. They have leather jackets, too. <laughs> Let's see. This. It's actually great stuff. No, now everybody's going to Buck Mason. Yeah, no, no. BuckMason.com slash twig. Thank you, Buck Mason. This is now Queen Pruitt's going to be like, I want Buck Mason. Aren't they nice? Look at this. Oh, yeah, yeah that... the women's clothes work with you, Stacey. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice white jacket. Because yeah. they're kind of classic, right? They're not. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They look. Chill. I don't. I don't like they to look wear like things I already own. Exactly. I'm telling you, this is the from now on your your kind of go to style. Look at that. Okay. Maybe it's because I I read Puck News now all the time. But what's going on with CNN, Warner, Discovery? What a mess and a half is going on over there. It's almost as bad as AOL. It's very much like that, isn't it? So Warner is the jinx, obviously. It's yeah. been a mess after mess after mess. So Discover and Warner, Discovery and Warner, <laughs> Discover and Warnery are meeting, me, mer- <laughs> they're merging. They're merging together. Uh, Warner is HBO and mm-hmm. CNN. I mean, Warner is a big, big property discovery is doesn't feel that big but they own a lot of stuff too and they're going to be running the show right what zaslav will be running the show yeah zaslav's running the show yep yep so apparently cnn even though they were about they still haven't merger hasn't happened yet but it's about to i think uh may 1st something like that cnn started cnn plus even though discovery didn't want them to discovery said wanted them to be, they wanted it like to all be HBO Max, like put everything in HBO Max. CNN Plus, they were going to spend a huge amount of money over the next three years. Now they're starting to fire people. Oh, boy. This story from Axios, Scoop, Sarah Fisher, CNN Plus looks doomed. This is the streaming version. Merely 150,000 subscribers so far. This is like Ant was talking about Agrawal. You know, he's only been in the job 10 minutes. This thing's only been on the air one minute. <laughs> yeah, because they put no news in it. I think that was part of the problem. Yeah. Part of the problem. Warner Brothers Discovery wants to eventually build one giant service around HBO Max. Zucker, of course, was fired at CNN. The new guy isn't in yet. CNN's he original... Now. He just started. He just started. Okay. CNN's original plan was for CNN Plus to become profitable in four years by investing a billion dollars... But in order to become profitable, they were expecting millions of subscribers. Let me ask you this. If, if, if CNN is the news arm of everything and this is their premium platform, what else can they add to make this a, a, a viable option? What, what's the carrot that says, you know it's a, what? It's a really good you question. Want us for, you want us for news. Now pay us more for more for- news. You know, and when, when way way back when I helped start Epicurious, mm-hmm. which had gourmet and Bon Appetit recipes, we did all stuff, and, and 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 the pressure came around the year two thousand to say, well, can we also do subscriptions? Can we also get some money for the consumers? And Joan Feeney, who was the brilliant person who, who started it, um, sat there and brainstormed for hours trying to think of what is it we can invent that'll on top of Epicurious already exists, people will pay for, and, and we came up with a million ideas, and finally she just said. The gold is the recipes. You yes, charge yeah. for the recipes. Yes. Or we don't charge. Right. And same for CNN. Gold the problem, is the of news. course, is the, news. the MSOs won't let you sell it separately. 
these cable systems. Okay. So they've got nothing <clears throat> else. That's 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 the crown jewels, and they got nothing else to sell, so they make it up. So so Anderson Cooper talking about parenting. Oh, okay, that's cute, but maybe it's a YouTube video you watch once, once yeah. a year. Right. You know, uh, so according to Fisher, CNN brought in a billion dollars in profit last year. Most of that coming from distribution contracts with the cable operators. Mm. This is according to her two sources. Yeah, that's where all the money is. That's where all, that's Fox where the money all this money is. <clears throat> we think about trying to get ads off of Fox. doesn't matter. It's all in the, in the carry fees. This was on the heels of already problem, troubled CNN after the firing of Chris, Chris Cuomo, the firing of Jeff Zucker, which was probably related. Uh, Zucker, who was kind of beloved by the on-air yeah. staff at CNN and uh, took <laughs> off. He had... Turned CNN more, and you'll remember this during uh, the last few years, uh, more political. And I, I don't know if this has to do with his departure. As you say, uh, the new guy, Chris Licht, isn't in position yet. But basically all CNN does all day, all night is Ukraine war. Yeah. Have you noticed that, Jeff? Is that driving you nuts? Oh, absolutely. Well, so, so it it's has like there's nothing else going on. Yeah. Like there's no so COVID. There's no nothing. Zaslav has talked about about um, you know like a back but to hard then news. Also other stuff. politicized. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, just the other thing to say is Chris Lick, the new head, um, who last was at CBS uh, running um, Colbert's show uh, as an executive. Uh, he he went on this week and he said, "Well, because I'm, I'm starting CNN, I'm going to quit Twitter," which of course drives me nutty. Okay, so you're going to stop talking to the public. <laughs> Very good. Um, so it's going to be this whole haughty, weird, um, objective, throwback kind of news that's not going to work well. Well, right now it's war porn. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's bizarre, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm Not but that this isn't an important story. Of course it is. Oh, yes. But there are other important stories in the country going on and well, around the, the night, world. It was the same during, during, during covid I mean, it was a very important story. People were dying. A million people were, are, are going to have died from this. But, yes, it was to the exclusion of all other That's news all they did. in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not surprised CNN Plus is having trouble because there's no news. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Um, it's really an interesting slow motion car wreck. So, Ant, can you imagine anything that you would pay for from CNN that isn't the CNN itself feed? Negative. Negative. No, I mean, right. it, if... The people watching CNN, they could care less, at least this is my assumption. They could care less about behind-the-scenes stuff. They can care right. less about just sit-downs with, with Anderson and, or whomever that's not news-related. They go to CNN for news, period. Here's the other problem. I, I, I searched Google for CNN plus sign. Doesn't yeah. have a thing. Yeah, so, yeah. Showing Google's results like, for <laughs> CNN. Right. Google said, wait, yeah. huh? That's a typo. <laughs> and I would say that, well, this is a big opportunity for CBSN, which is their streaming oh, version, except that Viacom Paramount's lose it, having the same kind of nutty, divisive, leaderless craziness mm -hmm. and uh, with a merger, of course. And uh, what's it feels like something's is is this is this a representative of uh, some sort of illness? In journalism and news? Well, it's, it's interesting. It fits into your first story, Leo, I think, which is, is it's, it's media pivots to whatever the next messiah is. So the next messiah of late has been streaming. So right. everybody's got to have a streaming channel, yeah. right? And so they're all rushing to that. And, and CNN, you know, hires Casey Hunt and hires, uh, what's his name? Um, the, the news guy from, from, from Fox, the, the only respectable one. Chris Wallace. And, thank you, Chris Wallace. Um, and, and, and so they, they spend a fortune on this. We ought to have a streaming channel. Everybody's going to have a streaming channel. Well, what's happening to streaming? Streaming's saying, oh, hell, it's oversold. Um, uh, Netflix is losing. Oh, darn. So where, and, where is the audience going? Is it YouTube? Is it TikTok? It's a limited. Well, it's, 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 it's people will spend only so much. They will subscribe I to know, only so many things. And there's it's so a many, scarcity. And there are so many sources of information exactly. and entertainment. No, and so no, many opportunities to stream. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's competitors to Netflix now, and and they're feeling it, right? Yeah. They're also Netflix is also feeling the the the, the, the embers of the pandemic. There was a, a huge upswing during that, uh, but yeah, there's plenty of things to stream. People are going back to work. There's less time to stream. Uh, much of it isn't worth anything. I think that's the main um, thing. Is there's only 24 hours in a day, and a yeah. lot of people are only going to give you. Uh, what's the analytic? They're going to give you 15 seconds guaranteed of your of their attention. 
and and then they move on to the people next thing. People watch a lot of TV. I just want to throw that out there because I am always stunned because I, I don't really hours watch a lot of night. TV. Hours a night. Four or five but hours it's a night. watch hours. It's a lot, to, a lot in the background. Yeah, because they... Exactly. Yeah, so ambient. I was going to say, sometimes streaming, because it feels like TV, it, it's still not the lean back experience. Uh -huh. It's much more purposeful. So things like Fox are a little different because you just turn it on and it just goes for hours. So it's a different. We have the news really on sometimes when we're when I'm making dinner, we're making dinner, we're kind of getting together. The news will be on for a little bit just to kind of catch up on the day. But then usually we'll watch episodic television. We'll watch uh, yeah, but there's, there's, you're, at night. you're well off. Um, there's whole homes where the TV's just on all the all time. All the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a different product for them. Right. I, I just, it's I feel like we're talking about TV like it's, it's this monolithic thing, but TV viewing habits are actually very different across different demographics. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And ages. And ages, especially. Meanwhile, Dean Basquet is about to exit the New York Times. And okay. Basquet, Basquet. I didn't Baquet, know he was Baquet. so French. Mr. Mr. It's Basquet. French, it's like Weimar, Weimar, Joey, not Weimar. Joey, just so you know. I, Joey Basquet. Joey Basquet is leaving, <laughs> and Joey Kahn is coming in as executive editor of the New York Times. I only bring this up just because I know Jeff likes to go on and on about this stuff. Anything to say? Is he a good um, guy? Oh, he's a very smart guy, uh, very much an inside guy, very quiet. Uh, I think that uh, my friend Jay Rosen at New York University, who's brilliant on this stuff, was quoted by the Washington Post about this, and I think that it means more of the same. Uh, A.G. Salzberger, who's now the publisher, um, having taken over from his father, is very quiet too, so they're, they're, they're peas of a pod. And, and Jay did a very good Twitter thread today talking when he was asked about what were the positive things of Beck Hayes Rain, and there were many things. He really brought it into digital. He brought the subscriptions up hugely. Um, he brought up investigations. He brought up the staff. But negatively, they still have not grappled with their role in the 2006 election, 16 election. Um, they still, they, you know, he dismisses listening to the public through Twitter or through any means. Uh, James Fallows just wrote a good piece. I just, just saw where he said uh, two things that, that, that Khan should do. One, bring back the public editor. Yes, um, that was a huge mistake. They got rid mistake. of it and said, and said oh, Twitter is going to be a public editor, and then they no. dismiss Twitter now, so they don't care about listening to the public. No. And two, uh, have an honest reckoning with your role with the 2016 election, and don't do it again. But, but they're, they're, that's not where they are now. Uh, Jay also has a, a, a theory, which I, I, I think is very intriguing, about the Times, which is when they... They went full on board with subscriptions as the primary means of support. It changed the newsroom so that the newsroom kind of has to prove it to their subscribers. Well, you don't own us. We're going to piss you off here and there. And I think that's what has led to a lot of the problems with oh, the that's page. Oh, that's and, interesting. And yeah, it really is. And 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 we're gonna we're gonna go talk to all those guys in the Ohio diner because we know you don't like that, but that's going to prove how independent and wonderful we are. And and I think it's, it, 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 this idea that subscription markets. Are wonderful because world friendly in charge. Well, no, they're trying to they're trying to um, uh, suck up to you on the one hand, and then prove they're independent from you on the other hand. And I think it's I think it's degraded the Times in some ways. I start my day now with the Washington Post, not with the New York Times. Unfortunately, though, I see the Washington Post going the same way. You know, the only reason I bring this all up is I feel like that we are rapidly heading into a situation in this world where news is going to become very very important. It always has been, but I think it a formed electorate is going to be vital to Absolutely. solve some of the problems we are going to face in the next decade or so. We've and got to rethink the fundamental. Oh, right oh, the, 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 the vessel of news being the most important, like where are people going to get the news yeah. from? It seems like that's the, the, the main thing. You know, is it going to be? Well, it's hard to find reputable people in areas that you're not focused in. So you look mm -hmm. for reputable outlets who can, Steer like the idea behind a newspaper is that they hire people who know what they're doing, mm. and you can pick a place and you know find those people. And that actually extends all the way to their opinion pages and voice. You like people read the Wall Street Journal for a certain worldview, and they read the New York Times or the Washington Post for a slightly different worldview. And I don't know. <laughs> Let us do...
do a Google. Wait, wait. I had a. Oh, you had an epiphany. I, I heard it and I let it go. I. Mm-hmm. That's okay. I mean. Was it an uh, ooh, ooh I, epiphany? I, no, it was an oh. It was. Oh. The Atlantic oh. had a great article and I thought Jonathan about Jonathan Hates Jeff. Heights. Oh, article. no. Yes. I oh. thought it was great. You didn't like it? Oh, I hated it. I, I, <laughs> this is why I brought it up. <laughs> that grumpy face. So uh, Jonathan Haidt, who I've interviewed, we've had him on Triangulation, wrote, uh, uh, I thought, a very important book called Righteous Minds. He's a, he's a social psychologist. Social psychologist. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Righteous Minds was why we can't agree. And I think, actually, as time has gone by, I think Haidt has maybe changed his uh, tune a little bit. But his most recent article, which I think is what you're referring to, Stacey, is why the past mm-hmm. 10 years of American life have been un- uniquely stupid. And it's not just a phase, and he blames social media. Of course he does. Of course he does. Well, okay. Did you read the article, Jeff? Yes, I did. It was long. It was okay. long. It, yeah, it was really long. But there were lots of things in I also watched him on Morning actually... Joe this morning. Oh. And he drove so me nuts. So I thought that I'm trying to pull up the article, and for some reason, I'm failing. At the paywall? Um, <laughs> I no, have a, do I... I have it right here in front of me. Uh, it's on the so run there now. was actually a section in there that actually picked your favorite point which uh was all about how it has given voice to the disenfranchised yes and i so i thought that was good because that is an important acknowledgement i thought i thought that many of the points he brought up were right on and i liked i i was actually kind of pissed that he spent so much time like educating us about this and like so like five paragraphs on like what to do about it Mm -hmm. But I thought the idea of adding friction is what I wanted to talk to you about, Jeff, because I thought that was an interesting way to ensure that people still had the ability to share their points of view and reach people, but also that it became it, that you had to try a little harder had to, to do work so. for it a little bit. Yeah. So I, I just I, I wanted to ask you specifically about adding friction to social media. So the the one thing he mentioned was Francis. Mm-hmm. How do you say? Is it Hofton? Huff, Hagen. Huff? Hagen. Francis Hagen. The, the, um, her uh, idea. Facebook. Uh, yeah, on Facebook, basically saying, yeah. "Look, you can only cut and paste something, or you can only hit share, and then you have to cut and paste to help slow the spread." And I was trying to think of things that might help on Twitter, other than mm. you know cutting down on bots. His, his, I don't. His, think I just want to get your solution, opinion on that. I don't think the solution is technology. I don't think it's it's UI. I don't think it's nudging. I think it's harder than that. I think it's much harder than that. And, and if I go back to Yashan Wong's uh, uh, thread, uh, when he said in there, as I said, I think I quoted this already, that's right, that, that it doesn't matter what you say, it, it's, it's the behavior. And the behavior is that people right now come on and they want to blow off and they want to go after each other. And, and the only way we're going to solve this is by having norms and institutions that we agree to as a society that say that that's unacceptable. That's the problem. And that's hard to get those agreements. Of, not now, of but I think in time we might. <laughs> I think in time, but but not so, now but, because it's people are trying to do this. So I, I just don't think there's any. E- I think it's, that's a that's a techno determinist um, uh, well, solution. Well, he also offers right. that as one of his solutions. One of his solutions was you know helping educate kids. Um, ah, so but there I, the kids are not the problem. It's the old farts who well, are the that, problem, and there's research. Mm-hmm. This. Right there in his own university, yes. Josh Tucker, he should have looked up, because Josh Tucker has good research on this, that this presumption, there's a lot of presumptions in this piece. One of them is, yeah, the kids and the echo chambers and all that. I don't and, think and the other he's thing focusing is he on the kids because they're sharing the problems. I think he's focusing on the kids because you can actually change kids. Inoculate We're not going to change my parents. Yeah. They're smarter than I mean, them. I love them, but... He says, prepare the next generation. His point, if I could put it in a nutshell, is that not that Twitter and tweets and social media sharings are, you know, so dangerous in and of themselves, but they are a, a million... It's death by a thousand cuts. There are a million blows. And what has happened as a result is that people are so uh, sensitive to what... And you are too, Jeff. I mean, uh, look... Look at all the attention you got. Look how much you were beaten down for your tweet. No, I wasn't. Last week. Wasn't well, they t- attempted to. They certainly... They attempted to, but yeah. I just... I but what it. happens, it may not have affected you, but what happens is... No, and, and I'm, I'm in a... I'm, as Stacey points out, I'm a privileged, white, yeah. cis, what he's tenured, saying is old, male, the country, person the country, yes. And I think this has always been the conventional wisdom, tends to be centrist. 
and then there's a left wing and a right wing. But what the, all of these little darts have done is pushed the basically empowered the extreme and and shot down anybody in the middle. He's kind of always been saying this is also mm-hmm. part of his earlier book, but so that the extremes have an outsized voice now, both on the left and the right, an outsized power. That. I think that's true. I right? can agree to that. I'm and someone that I'm, tends I'm, to be see, caught this, this in the is middle. Where that, You're a centrist, for yeah, sure. I'm, I'm always caught in the middle, and I get yelled at all the time because I don't lean one particular way or another regarding whatever social activity or political activity Precisely. we have. Yeah, Precisely. I, I totally agree with that. So this morning, he was on Morning Joe, and they had uh, Eddie Glaude Jr., who I, I think the world of, who's the head of the African American Studies program at Princeton, on at the same time to act as a, as a ballast. They basically gave Claude no time to talk at all, and uh, I was enraged Love afterwards, that. and I tweeted about it. Um, and it was a, it was a microcosm for what's happening. What we had was in Joe and Height, there were two white men complaining about saying that oh, uh, uh, people in our classrooms don't feel like they can talk, and and and, and we're being shut up when they wouldn't listen to the black man who was there trying to say to them and has said to them, you talk height about extreme right and extreme left. Who is the extreme left you're talking about in this balance here? Yeah. Are you trying to say people who are fighting for justice are this extreme left? Who is this extreme left? And it ignored, it was, it was a microcosm of the world we have where the, what's going on here, we've talked about this show plenty of times, and I've, I've quoted this, this, this tweet from Regina Rini, a, a professor in Canada, that says, it's, it's, at the one hand, it's the people who want to change the rules because they can finally have a seat at the table to say, I've had to live by your rules all this time, but mm-hmm. now I'm going to tell you, this is how you should treat me as a trans person, for example. Mm-hmm. And no, I don't want you to say that about me. And mm-hmm. then the people on the other side, Rini calls them the status quo warriors, say, well, don't criticize me, don't tell me what to do. Because they still want to hold on to the power they had. Yeah. This is all a process of renegotiating norms as a society. The worst part about hate speech is he acts as if this time is unique. Try the Reformation, bud, in the Thirty Years' War. Mm. You know, there's plenty of times before where technology has caused changes. It is it is an exception, a, a, a chronological exceptionalism to think that we're so special now. We're not. It was it was historically. Um, so are you saying there's I, no <clears throat> there's no issue? There's no problem? No, not at all. I'm saying that there are plenty of problems, and I'm saying the problems are a lot harder than he lets on, and the problems are us. The problems are that, and this is what, what Eddie Glaude was trying to say today to them, is that we are deciding who we are as America, to speak as an American thing here. We're deciding who we are, and, and, and there are people who are resenting that there are more people having their voice and choice in that, and that's the essence of what's going on here. That's the basis of January 6th. It, that's the basis of Charlottesville and don't cancel us and don't replace us. Let's admit that. Let's discuss that out loud instead of saying, oh, it's social media's fault. They made us worse suddenly. No, we've been a racist country for 400 years and it's coming to roost. And so on Twitter today, I said what's really going on here is that what he's ignoring is, as far as I'm concerned, Black Lives Matter is the Reformation and media are in the counter-Reformation. And, and Andre Brock Jr., who wrote the book I so admire called um, um, Distributed Blackness, said, ooh, I, I like that construct back in Twitter. And, and what we're seeing is a point-counterpoint that goes on at these moments of change in society. Yes, we're at a big moment of change, but we've got to grapple with our underlying problems. And we're not doing that. Um, I, I still Since agree you asked. to I wasn't the gonna aspect go into this, of, of having some friction, as Miss Stacy mentioned because. I think that's that's a, that's a the solutionism technological solutionism that doesn't get to the core problem whatsoever well, no, no I'm just saying it just in the people. simplest form having a little bit of friction to make you breathe a second before you hit send you know I think it's paternalistic I think that's that's saying like today I did want to tweet directly what, what was while it was happening in the show yeah and 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 no somebody decides that no 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 that's that's not good for you you shouldn't do that that's that's a paternalistic and techno solutionism yeah. way uh, that I don't think solves the problem whatsoever. I have to say, Jeff, it, to me it feels a little bit like you're the guy, you're in the middle of it, and you love it. You love the engagement, oh. the hurly-burly. And uh, somebody like Ant, and probably because you're black, you are not alla- You are not allowed to be centrist. You, ha- you have to... Yeah. Go to the, the point. Go to I the am, far left. I am the black man that's either not black enough or I'm too black. Yeah, yet exactly. I'm right, yet I live yeah, right yeah. in the middle yeah, of that. Yeah, exactly. So, and I the think point. the vast majority of people are kind of in that middle in one 
in one way or the other. I think yep. that's more the American state than anything else. And yet, we're we, so all of this so-called polarization is really this battle between these people on, on your side, Jeff, Jeff, the extreme left and the extreme right. Mm-hmm. But there is a, I think it's, it's not. Right, right there, right there, you're making an equivalency. No, but wait, wait. There is a which, vast which, majority of people like Ant in the middle who are looking to the left, looking to the right, and saying, this doesn't reflect me. This is a battle that uh, is not reflective of my experience. That's right. 100%. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, 100%. 100%. So I can kind of understand that, and um, I think it's a. I think that people like you, Jeff, who are in the hurly burly of it, think that that's like all that there is. Making presumptions here. I, no, 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 not at all. A, there, believe me, there's tons of people on the left who think I'm way too conservative. Uh, I defend capitalism. I defend these. these oh, so companies. you get it I, too? I get it too. Absolutely, yeah, I get got it, it this way. Absolutely, <laughs> I get it all the time. Not for the left, time. but he got it. Um, and I don't want it. I want to have discussions. I'm, I'm trying to write an academic book. I, what I love is having a discussion with so how with could people about this? How at, could at, I mean, honest? <laughs> <laughs> how can we get to the Google change there's log? A, there's a nudge. There's a little without for breaking you. Yeah, anybody's. That was lovely. I, I didn't mean to start this. <laughs> I, this is actually the sort of thing. I wasn't going like. to go there, Stacey. I wasn't going to go there. I, I appreciate I you know, asking. I, I thought it was. I was trying to like engage you, I since you normally I tune out all of this stuff. <laughs> that was a mistake. So now you know <laughs> why. You know, chips. I know. She's like, I'm I, done. I, was, with this. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> the Google <laughs> change law. Now we can't find oh, the button. Dead note. There we go. <laughs> the Google change log. I'm going to rip through this because I don't care one bit There's about it. There's not much it. here. There is Google not search much on here. desktop, tests redesigned that puts images, video, and more to the left, Jeff. Oh, wow. To the left. <laughs> to the left. <laughs> it's your fault, sir. Yeah. I blame yeah. you. Uh, Google now is getting an upgrade to nearby share where you don't any... This makes me very nervous. You don't, ev- you don't actually have to say, uh, okay... If you're in the you share if, to your own computer, you share to your own, own computer, machine. which I think is probably machine. a good idea. Yeah, um, but it, it does also make me a little nervous that there is no yeah okay. Uh, you can actually with AirDrop on Apple turn that on. I think so it happens automatically. So I guess that's just parody. Yeah, it's catching up. Yeah, it's catching up. up. Yeah. Nearby share, it's called, and I think it's moving Google closer to something Apple calls universal control, where you can actually kind of control all the devices from any one of them. Uh, so interesting. We'll watch. There was another zero day in Chrome. This is the third mm. emergency fix this year. Two vulnerabilities actually in the Chrome web browser, but one of them's a zero day already exploited in the wild. Get your get your update to your Google Chrome. It's a high severity zero day bug actively abused by attackers. Um Je- uh, Steve Gibson talked about it yesterday on uh, security. Now, if you want more details, hey, can I ask you a question about that? Mm-hmm. So, when I go looking for the show and I and I look up Google News, every time these kinds of things happen, a whole bunch of it used to be like the, just the New York Post, and then it was you know um, your Knight Ritter paper, and now it's even the technology publications, the CNETs. You know, you must un- uninstall this immediately. Emergency, emergency! It's just They're going it's crazy. Bait. It's yeah. usually it's not. all it is, right? Yeah, There's no. This is bait. not. I mean, yes, editors, you should update, but it's not a big deal, right? Editors, yeah. editors, editors, and you get updated uh, automatically. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry. But there are a lot of security flaws. We seem to be finding a lot of Microsoft fi- patched 238 flaws on a week ago. So there are a lot of security flaws. Uh, out there and I think really there's more attention yes on it and there's because, also yes. more um the you know more people a more people looking but also we're recognizing and there's much more government paying attention and stockholders paying attention to oh crap this is a big deal yeah yeah um, i mean okay. we should pay attention to it we should but it's not hair on fire it's not getting worse or anything or well it's not- it might be I mean, we also got to be aware of that, you know, with the war in Ukraine, we, Russia we is very much. We basically started looking for things and found that's right. is kind of found what it. I feel like. And we've been talking about it for a while and we've been building things that are going to be better. But until that actually starts happening, 
we're kind of hosed. Well, the positive. Well, and our, and our friend Craig Newmark, you know, just last week we talked about he's giving $50 million to worry about our cybersecurity. So the positive slant on this is we are finding and fixing them. Yeah. Uh, yes. I think that's yes. really the truth. And that's there. As you, they should. You could say we're going to do better, but we're not going to do better. There, there's always, <laughs> there's always going to be bugs. Software is in, it's just inherent in the process. Uh, so we, yes, we're getting better at finding them and we're fixing them, which is good. So update your Chrome if it's not updated already. Google is rolling out new badges for Chrome extensions, which will help you avoid the bad extensions. Why don't they just get rid of the bad I was wondering. Yes. <laughs> I put that in here. You know they're bad. Dump them. You don't get it. Uh, I guess it's the ones they can really verify are good. Yeah. If you So Google is now using a manual process to evaluate extensions for an enjoyable and intuitive experience. They're also making sure under the hood developers are using the latest APIs and they're looking at extension privacy practices and permissions. And then if you do it all well, you will get a prize ribbon identifying you as a featured extension. It says, created by the owner of a listed website, publisher has a good record, no history of violations, uh, it meets a high standard of user experience and design. They so, should end that with comma yet. Yet, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's actually not a joke because yeah. sometimes these extensions get sold. They're very popular. They're yep. very safe, and then the, the new owner does all sorts of nefarious mm -hmm. things. So there are going to be two badges: one with a check mark design for verified identity, and another badge that looks like a prize ribbon for best practices. Look for those in the extension store. Are you ready for your free Titan security key? If you are a Google One 2 terabyte subscriber, top of the line, best A number one, you're going to get a free Titan security key to be eligible. Which otherwise costs what? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 50, no, 35 bucks. That's okay. uh, yeah, some right. Better than some. The thing is, you can't really you poke shouldn't. with a. I gotta say, I'm too excited. Side. I gotta point this out. You shouldn't really just have one. You should always have two. One you use, you carry around, and one you keep somewhere safe, somewhere safe in case yeah. you lose the first one. I'm just saying. So, anyway, uh, these are nice USB A or USB C NFC enabled Titan security keys. Um, it has a built in keychain loop. Good way to get you started. <laughs> I think I have a two terabyte. That sounds plan. like that sounds like a you know one of those 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 cheap TV commercials. And with a with a chain for your with the loop for your for your keys. <laughs> for your keys, but you do oh, now, look, and we'll cut a hole in it. I keep my security key. It's not a Titan. It's a Yubi key, key, right? On my keychain right there, so I can you know I can log into things. My See? problem is I don't always carry my keys around. That's my problem. Well, you don't carry. You should get locked out more often than you would. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm in my home. I'm How do you gonna... get into the office? No, I'm saying if, like right now, I actually have my key in my pocket because I had to go to the toilet before we started the show. Right. But any other time, my yeah, key my. is normally in, this, in right. the host office. Right. Know? But you walk around. I keep it in my pocket. Keys yeah. All the time. Well, that's honestly one of the benefits. There are, several, there are two benefits to wearing a, a suit jacket like I do, a blazer. One is it hides your girth. The other is it's got multiple pockets it's for slimming. storing. It's slimming. And you're like Captain Kangaroo. You've got lots of pockets and you can carry all sorts of stuff. Highly recommended. You probably can't buy jackets that fit you, though, I bet. I can't. It'd be like it just the Hulk. costs a lot. You go like this and it splits down the back, right? Yeah. It just costs a lot. Oh, mad. Long arms, wide shoulders. Uh, Google is rolling out Convert. Conf Conversation magnet tool. No. <laughs> Conversion. You're having a problem today. Conversion. You didn't do it in the right voice. That's why. Google rolling out conversion migration tools for Google Analytics 4. You can use this tool to import your usual. You know why I can't read this? You know why? Because it's. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And that's... Play the drums. Play Google. the drums, John. Google. Get us out of this. Well, Change log. Well, look here. Mr. Howell, I guess I owe you a beer because he did read it. And oh, did you did bet that I wouldn't read it? <laughs> yes, I put that in the change log. 
Do you want to uh, defend it? Do you want to say no, what it's all about? No, I just put it in there because it is a change, but I had no interest in it either. Conversion but. migration tool for Google Analytics 4. But we did have a side bet here. <laughs> that may be the most boring <laughs> thing ever in the change log. Ever. Wow. Mr. Howell, I owe you a beer. He did read it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish now to take you, ladies and gentlemen, to Pound Town. Are you ready to buy a $420,000 home in Onalaska, Wisconsin? Look at this lovely home. There, The owner has a little bit of a predilection for signs. Uh, there's the American flag. There's a welcome sign on the door. Go inside. There's another welcome sign in the mudroom. Our, Our nest, nest pillow over the kitchen sink. The kitchen is for dancing. Where is the bread? I forget. Bread goes in the... Line, honey. By the way... I want to know where I get this microwave. What is this super wide microwave Good for what is that? brontosaurus legs? I don't know what the hell. <laughs> that is weird. Eat a little pizza peel what that you must to do here? never right. use for a pizza. Uh, but the best part is in the bedroom, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> where you will be welcomed to Pound Town. I cannot. I, I, did they, I think no. they put that there just so they it did. viral. You want to hear the story? So okay. this is great. This is from the Zillow Gone Wild uh, Twitter account that lists, you know, interesting home listings, which there of which there are many. But then the story came out, and this is in Mel Magazine. Laura Hagenbarth and her husband, Flip Holmes, when she listed her family's rural Wisconsin home for sale online on Friday, she hoped the spacious bedrooms, vast plot of land, and freshly refurbished decor would catch the eye of a few potential buyers. Never in her wildest dreams would she have guessed her hand, house would land on Zillow Gone Wild, mainly because of the Welcome to the Pound Town sign. I never in my life... She should, she should sound like, I never in my life <laughs> thought I'd go viral for anything. Oh, Midwestern mom. I don't even use Twitter, no. And my home is trending there today like... What the heck? <laughs> That's an actual <laughs> quote. They began buying and flipping houses in 2013. The house in Onalaska, Wisconsin, she lovingly refers to as the Pound Town House, is their fourth. I've always loved... She actually should be more, yeah, yeah, sure, you betcha. I've always loved decorating and design. I just kind of started winging it, <laughs> no, you know. That's more Minnesota. When we started flipping homes, That's since Minnesota. we do most of the work ourselves, they talk like that Wisconsin, too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Born, born from that penchant for interior decor and design, Hagenbarth started a small online shop, Sleepless Beauty Designs, to sell her DIY signs and decorations, which helps explain why there are she few. She makes them? She makes them. There are a few walls in Welcome the house that are Pound Town is one that she makes. She made it. <laughs> People, she she's gonna, what she's it gonna was? sell a fortune yes. in them. Oh, People are saying I went overboard with the signs and I lead to lay off Michaels, even though I never go to Michaels. If I go to a store, it's Hobby Lobby or TJ Maxx, but I mainly make my own signs. To be sure well, so go to eBay go to eBay and search for Pound uh, uh, Pound Town. Yeah. It's already already starting to populate. Oh yeah. Uh, she says, I saw the original Pound Town sign in a group on Facebook and was, yeah, I love that. I need to make it. <laughs> For some reason, Mel Magazine then goes on to say, For the sake of clarification... Pound Town is a euphemism for sexual intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> and the sign welcomes visitors to the place where that happens. I wanted to make it look like just another cheesy decor sign. And then once you read it, bam, raunchy and hilarious. She created. I like this lady. I know. Don't you love her? She created the sign while her husband was gone so she could surprise him when he returned. He absolutely loved it. It matches our humor to a T. Plus, two out of three of our kids can't read. And when our oldest read it while I was making it, I just told her it was a funny quote from a movie, and she never asked about it again. There's the story of Welcome there to we Pound Town. I think we have a show title. <laughs> uh, I like what Zeph will put in the chat. What does Zeph say? Delightfully, de delightfully prurient. Yes, delightfully <laughs> purient. 
Uh, there is a vodka made out of carbon dioxide, which is going to save the planet. Save the earth and get drunk. Yeah. yeah. And then go to Pound Town. Yeah. And then go to Pound Town. <laughs> it's uh, from a company called The Air Company. They sell vodka, hand sanitizer, and perfume made out of CO2 pulled out of the air. Is that, wait a minute, is this right? The company claims it's yeah, the world's it leading yep. carbon technology company. It creates carbon negative alcohols and consumer products from CO2. They just raised $30 million in Series A funding. Uh, here's the machine from air and water to alcohol in a number of steps through a fancy looking machine. Wow. All right. So there's a machine. If you want to buy the uh, vodka, it's called How Air much is it? CO. That's I don't right. know. I forgot to it's look a up. Fancy box. Should we go to the air company and buy some? Aircompany.com. We make products from air. And then it says we use cookies to ensure. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the future. All right. Here's uh, the sanitizer, air, air sanitizer. Um, that's the technology. Uh, where do I buy the They're hiding the, the cost. Washka? Yeah, they don't. They don't, Products uh, on the bottom. Products. Okay. Mm-hmm. Perfume. Air vodka. There it is. Okay, shop now. Shop now. Should I? You know, uh, Amy Webb sent me some uh, uh, Glyph oh, whiskey. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to try that. You haven't tried it yet? Go get it. It's in the cabinet over the refrigerator. Okay. I think you should try it on the show. Okay. Might as well, right? Sure, why not? Um, she sent us this whiskey that's made, also made completely synthetically to simulate the aging and stuff. So, by the way, this vodka is gluten-free. Uh, you can get it from... $55 to $79. Oh, that's not... Well, that's a little pricey, isn't it? A little pricey. But that, you know... 40% alcohol by volume, is that what vodka Yeah, runs? it's 80 know. proof, yeah. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. I wonder what it tastes like. It tastes like Brooklyn. All right, <laughs> so this is... It's bottled in Brooklyn. So this is Glyph... Amy Webb said, somebody's been drinking the glyph. <laughs> Amy Webb sent it to, to us. Spirit whiskey with natural flavors. Uh, shall I pour you a, f- a finger full? Maybe a Do you drink it neat? Maybe a, maybe a half finger, considering what I've heard. That's plenty. Hmm. That it's not very good? Well, I don't want to look a gift whiskey in the mouth, but I, it's... I don't know. See, I, this is why we want an ant to try it, because he, he knows his whiskey. What makes it special? It's made uh, completely synthetically. It's not aged. They they do all of the aging to oh, make a... It's making a bourbon, here. yeah, um, in the lab. Bourbon or a scotch? It's a bourbon. Bourbon. Um, 14 awards, platinum award at the 2020 SIP competition. This doesn't smell good, sir. It doesn't smell good, does it? <laughs> A bourbon Glyph's, must smell it's, good. Um, That's the whole point of a bourbon. <laughs> it smells oh, chemically. Chemical. <laughs> oh, the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, all you need to know. Whiskies owe their flavor, aroma, and mouthfeel to hundreds, <laughs> sometimes thousands of molecules developed during the distillation bar- barrel aging. To make glyph, we source these molecules directly from plants and yeasts rather than obtaining them through distilling and aging. Our, so essentially, they're able to produce whiskey with 94% less water, 92% less agricultural land use, and they emit 87% <laughs> less CO2 emissions. And I know that's what you're looking for in a good whiskey. Oh boy. Is there any leftover lunch so that Ant can get the taste out of his mouth? Oh, boy, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was my thought when I drank it. Is this has it tastes like um Cherokee D. It tastes like a cough syrup. Oh man. First we create a profile of our desired spirit, its precise flavor, aroma, and mouthfeel, and identify the constellation of molecules responsible for these characteristics. I appreciate so, the effort, but Yeah, they're trying to inv- you know man, some things you don't need to change. Oh boy, that's bad. <laughs> tastes like dog patch, the neighborhood in San Francisco where it's made. Isn't that mm. interesting? Hey, they have great pizza in Dog Patch. Oh, they do. Maybe if I had an ice cube in it, that would have helped it. But that <laughs> what would you? What would you? Des- how would you describe it? It's almost like it wanted to have a bit of a licorice taste to it, 
but it's just <laughs> but it's so much more medicine-y like you know like yeah. um there's some weird floral uh, thing going on in it oh man it's not actually it's not bad if you don't say oh this is is this going to taste like jack daniels it's just no it's i didn't even i wasn't even thinking that i i I just went in blindly. That's why okay, you Burke. smell it. And it does taste a little like A&W root beer. No, oh, no. I don't want that either. Root beer, <laughs> is root beer is horrible. Okay, well, if you don't like root beer, oh, I don't know boy. if I'm going to trust you. Yeah, maybe maybe with a, an ice cube it would be a little bit better, but that was that was hard. That, mm, I it hope tasted Amy's like, not watching. Um, well, it, it's just not for me, but yeah. I appreciate the effort that yeah. they put into this. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> Maybe they just need to get, go a little farther. I don't know. All right. Um, let's take our final break. That is not our pick of the week. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> but we no. will get to our picks of the week. I'm yeah. used to drinking can something I, can that I ask you an item through before a full barrel carburetor. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know what? If you ran out of gas, you might be set. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> Center cam. Have you looked at the center cam? No. What is the? I'm going to look at it right center now. Cam? The center 177. cam. I wonder if you recommend this. For com. Us. I haven't seen this. So we don't Captivate your audience. It's the world's middle screen screen webcam. So it's in the middle of your screen. So that you, so that you're looking at at, at right at. Oh, that's an interesting at. idea. Oh, so um, it hangs over your from your screen. That's fine. But what if you're trying oh, to? Oh, with do its work? own little ring light. Yeah, it's got its own little ring light. That's cute. That's not going to give you much brightness, is it? No, not no. that. No. But I mean, but what if you're someone that's actually trying to do work during said Zoom call or what have you on a laptop? What if you're trying to be on Twitter while you're also recording a... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't like that. I think laptop cameras are fine where they are at the top of the screen as yeah. long as you just look at it. And, and are we all used to people looking below us? Well, you don't look. You don't. Uh, you're not looking below us. Or what are you looking at, Jeff? I do. People. Well, I try people to look yell at, at me all the time. You're looking down. I never look at the camera. Yeah, it's hard. I think we don't want people to look at the camera. I oh. can't say that. It's a little creepy if I start doing the show and I'm really boring into your eyes and looking at you. Don't you think that's a little bit creepy? Hypnosis. You're supposed to look at our foreheads, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> when, even when I uh, did TV. And I think I was pretty good at connecting with the audience. I would always glance away because I don't think people want you to stare at well, them. Well, yeah, every now and then, glance I would always, away. Yeah, because yeah. you look you look robotic otherwise. Yeah, well, you don't, you know, it's yeah, like, you look weird. but you could, you know, you can use it as punctuation where you go, you know, I really want to tell you something. Yes, right, right, right. And, right, then, right, it, and, then, it, and then it's punctuation. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to do the whole time you're talking into the camera. Uh, I, I'll have to watch some news. That's why you have B-roll. Yeah, that's true. But I think Anderson Cooper, well, Anderson Cooper might look into the camera. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, need, I need water. Let's 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 all stare. Let's go to the ad so we can uh, <laughs> okay. get our waffles. <laughs> our show you know, today. One eye, one eye goes a little to the other. They, they I'm cross-eyed. Don't waffles. bring it up. Oh, sorry. That's uh, see again. I'm handicapped, and you should not mock it. I don't mock it. I was saying that with yeah. With no, I have a. I have a. When I was a kid, it was funny. I remember going to the doctor. I remember this vividly. I must have been in seven, eight, and uh, the doctor's talking to my mom, and she say he says, "Well, you know, one eye turns in a little bit. But it's not like he's going to be on TV or anything." <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> That's what the doctor said, and I don't know if that had anything to do Best with anything. Doctor ever, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's amblyopia. It's I had a little bit of a lazy eye. My daughter had it too. When when she was little, we she pat we she had to wear a patch. Poor little kid, and then special glasses, and it's been corrected. And had had my parents done that, but they thought eh, he's not going to be on TV. So. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Blue Land. I am on a crusade. I really am to eliminate, and Lisa and I are together on this, eliminate single-use plastics. I just, I feel like it, there's a few things we can do in our lives to make the world a better place. I see the plastic patch in the, you know, in the middle of the ocean. I see turtles and animals, sea animals, die from plastics. I, I, we now have plastics in our 
lungs, in our bloods. We have microplastics. And it and it uses oil. It's a bad thing. So I'm gonna, you know, I don't carry plastic bags to the grocery store. We have shopping bags. Um, we try to eliminate plastics everywhere. There is one place in our lives it's hard to eliminate plastics. That's in the cleaning things we use, the clean products we use. But I have to tell you, an estimated five billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away in America every year. Five billion thrown away. And if that weren't bad enough, most of those bottles were filled with 90% water when they were delivered to the store in a big truck. They're shipping water around in these. Blue Land has figured out a way to win for everybody. Stop wasting water. Stop throwing out more plastic. Get Blue Land's revolutionary refill cleaning system instead. Blue Land was founded on the belief that a cleaner planet starts by eliminating plastic waste while creating powerful, effective cleaners in your entire home. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, I've tried those eco-friendly cleaners. They don't work. No, these work. These are great. This is an example. This is a uh, Blue Land Forever bottle. This is the for, uh, it says on it, multi-surface. It's a beautiful bottle. It's about 10 bucks when you buy the, the kit. You don't throw it away. When you, when you use it up, you fill it up with warm water up to the line, and you drop in a tablet. And it dissolves, and it makes a great cleaning solution. They've got multi-surface cleaner. They've got dishwashing soap. They've got hand uh, dishwashing soap. They've got dishwashing machine soap. They've got uh, toilet cleaner. Those tablets are great, by the way. You throw them in. You don't need a bottle for that. You throw it in the toilet. It's incredible. Uh, I I have the hand soap everywhere in the house. We even have it at work now. Did you see that I put some in? And this smells great. And then when you run low, they don't. you don't throw this out. You don't get a new bottle. You just get a tablet. You, they have a replenishment service if you want, or you can just order them on uh, on demand as you need them. They have wonderful scents. Iris agave, that's what's in the bathroom, the men's room right now. Perine, lemon, lavender, eucalyptus. Uh, they have unscented products as well if you don't want scents. We wash all our laundry in it. We do our dishwashing in it. No more plastic bottles for us, and it feels good. And you're not sacrificing anything they're effective. So just discard that outdated idea that eco-friendly products are more expensive and less effective. You're going to save money. These uh, these tablets, money-saving refill tablets, start at just $2 each. So this is an incredible money-saver, earth-saver, and you're going to love it. Plastic-free laundry and dishwasher tablets. The toilet tablet cleaner it sells out. Get it. It's back in stock. I am a huge fan. Just fill these beautiful Instagrammable bottles with warm water. Pop in one of the hand soap or spray cleaner tablets, and within minutes you have a powerful cleaning product that smells great, works great, and is earth-friendly. I think in every respect this is a win all around. Try Blue Land today. You're going to love it. Your planet will thank you. Your kids will say, wow, it smells good in here. And they'll wash their hands more. I swear to you. I love the foaming hand soap. I've got it. Like I said, it's in everywhere now. Even in the men's room. we got to get one for the ladies. Right now, you get 20% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash T-W-I-G. Blueland.com slash twig. This is a great housewarming gift. When my daughter moved into her new apartment, I set her up with the Blue Land. She's got Blue Land everywhere. It's wonderful. Blueland.com slash twig. You know, every plastic bottle ever made is still sitting there in the landfill. They don't degrade. They don't go away. They're just sitting there. Scary. Billions of them. Let's let's stop that, right? Right now, you can get 20% off your first order when you go to blueland.com slash twig. Blueland.com slash twig. Um, this is an advertiser I, I love. I can really get behind. All right, Stacy, you said you were going to help Insteon users... Find yes, a better if you solution. go to Stacy on AOT, I have a link for y'all. This is a bunch of options, so the best way to go is just this is every single option available you to, for you today. Um, many of which are actually things we haven't tried the move, to move it over because we don't have a non-working Instan hub either of us. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin actually used to have one, but he shut it down years ago. Um, but so, so you're talking about hoops. Which is, or ha hoops, habitat home hoops? assistant yeah. open hab okay. all of these so basically we cover the gear that you need the instruction we link directly to the instructions from the most reputable 
version of those instructions. There's even an Insteon compatible um, product called Home Seer. That's interesting. Yeah, Home Seer, Home Seer, yeah. And yeah. So basically, a lot of options available to you, differing costs, different you know capabilities. But personally, I would. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. She's boring herself. <laughs> I mean, does. usually, usually she yawns when I'm talking. That's the first. Jeez, yeah. I don't know that's what that's happened there. Huh. Would you like some glyph? Um, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I need food and water, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, I would say I, I know there's lots of people who are like, we're going to get the code and we're going to set it back up. I'm like, y'all, it's done. It is done. Yeah. Just stop buying more it would be I nice would if i mean somebody put out a press release saying that instead of just disappearing that's bizarre yeah it would be nice um and we'll wait for that or but, maybe they could file for bankruptcy yeah right, in the something meantime. anything let us know i'm keeping an eye open i'll let y'all know it's a front page of stacy on iot.com and if you ever needed a reason to go there now you've got it that's a what a wonderful thing you're doing over there. That's good. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, Mr. Jeff Jarvis, welcome well, to Pound Town. <laughs> I want you to get that sign. I saw on eBay they have a mayor of Pound Town. Oh, for me. I might get that for our bedroom. That's good. <laughs> yeah. No. That's good. Um. All right, so there's a whole bunch of numbers, but, uh, but I'm going to go to one. Pick one, any one you want, yeah. yeah. Well, we can just go through them real quickly, like okay. you go through the uh, change log. Yeah, good. A- uh, Jassy's uh, uh, letter to shareholders says that Amazon now employs 260,000 drivers worldwide. Wow, that's amazing. I said earlier the digital advertising is going down. It's up 35% according to the Interact- Interactive Advertising Bureau. Uh, digital ads, digital video is up 50%. Digital audio is the biggest winner, up 57%. Podcasts. Seeing all of that, yes. Podcasts. And there's a survey of teenagers. Now I'm forgetting who did it. Sandler. Uh, Piper, Piper Sandler. Sandler. Yeah. Uh, tw- uh, 26% of teens own a VR device, but only 5% use them daily. Mm-hmm. And 48% uh, are not terribly interested in the in the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then TikTok is uh, now the fave among the teens, the teen people, the teeners, the youths. Uh, at thirty three percent of finally beating Snapchat at thirty one percent. Oh, interesting. However, I'm going to go to an important number now because it's something I didn't know. Maybe you all knew this, and I just didn't know this. But there is not enough knowledge to this. Do you know what happens if you dial the number nine eight eight on the phone? No. It is suicide hotline. Oh, that's good to know. That's not necessary. No, that's new. That, that's new, first of all, and it's not. Comp- I don't think it's there yet. Not fully there yet. Yeah, but that is oh, okay. why. Remember, we talked about this. Many people are going to have to dial ten-digit numbers where in the past they didn't have to, right? Because of this new nine eight eight. Let me see the exact date. All providers are required to route them. Yeah, and text messages to nine eight eight. Yeah, this is very very uh, by important. July sixteen. There you go. It's not nationwide so yet. The Trevor Project has done a poll and said that, that uh, 69% of respondents had not seen, heard, or read much about this. So getting the word out is critically important. Um, so actually, let me, let me correct you. Oh, yes, you're right. By July 16th, 988 will route calls to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. So this has to happen by July 15th. Okay. All providers must complete this process. All right, good. I had not heard it. I didn't know. Yeah, brand new, and that is really important. And that, uh, thank you. I thought you were going to talk about Chipotle. Well, that is an interesting number. Is not? Is it not? It is. Go ahead. Chick Fil A, number one restaurant among the youth, but Chipotle, which is number three, gained three hundred BPS of share. What's that? BPS? It's per second. Bits per what is it? Base, <laughs> basis basis <laughs> points. Basis points to eight oh. percent. Starbucks number two at eleven percent. So. Among the Youngs, Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, Chipotle. What's also interesting, if you saw this on the rundown I put in there, Chipotle has started a $50 million VC fund, Ooh. I guess for new kinds of beans. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, really? Huh. Huh. Then that's the numbers of the week. Thank you, Jeff. We could do a bunch of numbers every week. I don't mind that. I think it's oh, oh, yeah, fun. more work for me. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot. 
Mr. Jarvis, that Amazon number about the drivers, what, what was that again? That's 260,000 drivers around the world. It's in Jassy's, it's under the Amazon section. It's in Jassy's uh, shareholder letter. Question for you. Do you think that's yes. enough because of the whole work conditions narrative that we hear from all of the drivers struggling to make the deliveries on time? <clears throat> it's a good. It's a good question, man. I mean, I you know, I was I was just thinking about. It. I mean, I have. I, I, how long has it been since we've gotten an Amazon delivery from uh, UPS or the mail? Yeah, it's been a while, right? They've they've managed to take it over in a way that uh, who thought it was possible? I mean, there's these areas where I you know I thought too small. Like nobody's going to be able to do map every mm-hmm. street in the, in the country. That's ridiculous. It's fine you know, that they're taking over, yeah. but at what cost, though? Yeah. Well, I think there is a you know, cost not just to the humans, but also to the roads. I will get sometimes three or four deliveries from three or four different trucks in one day. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. And well, that means there's way go. too many trucks out and about. <laughs> that's you. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> you my so, let me try my to buy driveway that is a gravel driveway, and it is suffering. Yeah, right? <laughs> we have a neighbor that gets so many Amazon deliveries, they put a giant metal box outside with instructions and a number code, and it says, put the Amazon packages in here. Wow. And even then... Many's the day where obviously the box is full and it's piled high wow. with Amazon packages. Okay. So, so and I think a couple things. I think that the unionization at Amazon, like Starbucks, is going gonna, is gonna to spread. No question about it. Mm. Uh, it's going to need to. Uh, even though they pay more than everybody else and they've raised the rates, they've raised the salaries of, of people on hourly wages – across industries. It's part of the reason that we have inflation right now, but it's a good thing because it's a redistribution of wealth and it should happen. So Amazon has done that well, but yes, the work conditions are difficult. They also, another story today is they're going to, they hired um, former Attorney General... Oh, uh, one? Uh, the lady. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 yeah. Lorena... Uh, Loretta Lynch. Lorena Bobbitt. Lynch. Uh, Lynch, that's uh, right. Yes, Lorena Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> to do a... Um, to do a, 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 you know a how race. my mind works. Yes, we do. We do. That's what we're trying to talk over you. Not Lorena Bobbitt. Loretta Lynch, of course. (laughs) Good Lord, man. Stacey just stares at the camera. She says, I'm so sorry I'm here. So, so sorry. Um, so anyway, they're going to conduct a racial equity audit at at, at Amazon. So I think things are going to, I think they're going to have to change at the company. And, and. Not a bad thing. Somebody in the chat room is, uh, many in the chat room pointing out, I could, if I weren't so greedy, Set my Amazon deliveries to all come on a single day. Same day, yeah. yeah. Yes, you could. Would yep. that eliminate all those trucks? That's uh, isn't or would that I guess, whole part or would of the I whole save the earth on the same day? Isn't that part I'll of the save the earth message? Yeah, I'll try it. That's you're absolutely right. I should do that. It is true. Sometimes I because we have our set to go in the same day, but sometimes we do get multiple Amazon trucks at our house at the same time. Mm. So, mm. Mm-hmm. but it can help. Yeah, I'll turn that on. All right, like let's it. go. What you think about it? We all drove to five different stores. Waffle, waffle time. Waffle time. Uh, five o'clock stop. Waffle time. It is first, though, before waffle time, Aunt Pruitt's turn for his picks of the week. All right. Uh, quickly, first off, uh, yesterday, not yesterday, Monday, Black Magic Design announced a bunch of new updates, uh, cloud support, a whole lot of different hardware, a lot of stuff that I'm not going to necessarily need. NAB is coming need. This, this week, so they got stuff to say. Yeah. Yes. And then, um, but the thing that got me interested was DaVinci Resolve mm-hmm. Beta 18 is out for people to play around with. I'm not using it yet, but I have been using Resolve a little bit more recently for some client work and 18 has me excited so try it out go look at it it's free uh if you're interested next adobe max was um they've announced their dates for this year and it's in person so that's some happy times for content creators to be able to get together again in downtown la so uh, it's in October. I believe it's the like 18th through the 20th or something. They're like still that. streaming if you want. But, or uh, streaming. But you can go to L.A. and do it in person. Yep, yep, yep. Nice. And next up, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Gamecock. And I know that sounds weird coming from a Clemson person, but Dawn Staley. Dawn Staley is the oh, God basketball bless her. coach. Yes. From um, down in Columbia, South Carolina. I used to watch Dawn Staley play basketball. Had a crush on Don Staley, good lord. Oh, you're kidding. Oh boy, yeah. And, she uh, was the star of March Madness, wasn't she? She was so yeah. dead I'm good at the University yeah. of Virginia. And then she nice. was for the Charlotte the Sting. This is back in the nineties. And uh but yeah, she's now the coach. She's been the coach for about 13 12, 13 years, 13 years yeah. something like that. Yeah. Won the national championship for the second time this year. 
And her speech was just the best because she took the time to recognize not only the players that start on the team for, for the basketball team, but she also made a point to shine the light, quote, on the uh, bench players because Good. that's the thing. A lot of folks, they, kids anyway, they don't quite get the fact that, hey, even though you're not necessarily a starter, you're still very important on the team. Um, so if you check that link out in our show notes to watch that video, it's very, very heartwarming. And uh, I will not hold it against her that she had a $500 jacket on. <laughs> hey, was, she's paid. <laughs> yeah, she is she's got, paid. She's got the money. The first uh, uh, black coach in men's or women's Division One basketball history to win multiple championships with uh, South Carolina. She won, when they won the f- her first national championship, of, I think it was back in 07, when they cut down the basketball net, she took her pieces of the net and trimmed it up into little pieces and sent it to all the other oh, black coaches Good for her. in the league just to say, hey, we're you know. Too. Yeah. $5,000. Sorry, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> I was like, a $500 She's jacket 5, is not actually 000, that expensive. Sorry, $5,000. I think <laughs> she's the highest paid coach now. You know, it, she's up there Good amongst the greats with she Gina Oriyama and, yeah. and, and Pat Summit. Yes, yeah. I do watch women's college basketball. So, yes. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, concluding this episode of This Week in Google. Fun show. Thank you. Stacey Higginbotham is at Stacy on IoT. Sign up for her newsletter. It's free, StacyonIoT.com, the free, uh, fabulous show she does with Kevin Tuffel, the IoT podcast, at Giga Stacy on the Twitter. If you want to follow her nice Twitter, it's over there. Smart. Nice Pollyanna Twitter. Nice Smart. Twitter. Twitter. If you want to follow the evil Twitter... <laughs> at Jeff Jarvis <laughs> at buzzmachine.com at face the dire- grumpy Twitter grumpy Twitter the director of the Town Eye Center not <laughs> for entrepreneurial journalism at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York <laughs> no he's not grumpy not grumpy no. Aunt Prude hosts Hands-On Photography. What's coming up this week on Hands-On Photography? You're going to do a little street. We're going to talk street photography again. I have another photographer that's actually local here to the area, and it's it's going to be a great He gets up great, close great and intimate, and I am going to listen because I am so embarrassed to take pictures of people, and he gets right in there. Right in their faces. Yeah, and it's, I just want to know what his trick is to it, do it's, that. It's going to be good. Yeah. But can I shout out Mr. Jarvis? Yes, Mr. Jarvis was on the Fireside Chat for Club Twit uh, last indeed. week, and holy crap, it was so much fun talking to him. It was and a lot of fun. I tried to ask Ant more questions than he asked oh, me. Oh, no, on. that's not how that show was going to work with me. Buddy. I know it didn't. I tried, though. I did try, didn't I? I tried. You did. You did. Sneakily. That's on the uh, Twit Plus feed if people didn't get there for the right. AMA. And mm-hmm. we've got some more coming up. Scott Wilkinson is yep. May 5th. Stacy's Book Club. Termination Shock, Neil Stevenson. You have a little time to read it, June yep, 16th. You need time to read you, that. It's a month off, but uh, get, <laughs> yeah, get got, reading. I didn't last vote. Week. I had shorter got, options in there. No, no, that's you, good. You got sympathy from Stacy last week saying, yeah, that's not like this is a real long one. This man. is good, man. But I'm, but I'm enjoying it so far. So, yeah, yeah we're good. But, yeah. Are you listening or reading? I'm listening. I'm listening to it. What's I think the Seek Warrior section is a lot of fun. You should enjoy that, yeah? All I know is right now, vitamin D is not what I thought it was. Uh oh, that's all I'll Uh-oh. say. <laughs> all of this happens in the club. Now, if you're not a member of Club Twit, you, I hope you're not feeling left out. It isn't expensive to join. You don't need to be left out. You don't out. need to not be. at all. Nope. No, seven he's bucks a month. The way. Gets you <laughs> in. You get a lot of benefits too. All of the shows ad free. Absolutely, you don't even hear this plug for Club Twit. Uh, you also get the Twit Plus fuss, tip, <laughs> the Twit Plus feed. Again, and, so not in the right voice. And, uh, the Twit Plus feed and access to our fine Discord where it, all the chatting happens. It's really a uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful place. So if uh, it, it's in a big support for us, too. We are able to launch shows in there uh, because they're not ad-supported, so we are able to launch them in there with the support of our members. Twit.tv slash Club Twit. Thank you in advance. But also, sir, we now offer annual plans yes. for club twit so just, if you don't want to do the seven bucks a month you can just sign up for 84 bucks for the reason we did that a lot of people a wanted to buy a gift for a family member or something mm-hmm. like that instead of buying a seven dollar gift they, they wanted to buy a year so 
There you have it. There's corporate memberships as well. Twit.tv slash club. Twit. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Jeff. Go get some waffles. Go get some kachoy pepe. Thank you, uh, Aunt Pruitt. I'm going to get some water. Yeah, yeah. Get some water and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Too much glyph. Watch down the glyph. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We do this week in Google at 2 p.m. Pacific every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. If you want to watch us live, live live.twit.tv. There's also an audio stream there. If you're watching or listening live, chat live, irc.twit.tv, or, of course, in our Club Twit uh, Discord. After the fact, all of the shows are available at the website, twit.tv. In the case of this show, twit.tv slash twig. You'll see uh, at that page some links. There's a YouTube channel. All the Twitch shows are there. Uh, there's also links to your favorite podcast players. You can subscribe to those in, the, in one of those and get the show automatically the minute it's available on a Wednesday evening. Uh, we thank you for listening. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time on Twig. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, editor of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I'm joined by Tarek Malik, the editor-in-chief over at Space.com, in our new This Week in Space podcast. Every Friday, Tarek and I take a deep dive into the stories that define the new space age. What's NASA up to? When will Americans once again set foot on the moon? And how about those samples from the Perseverance rover? When are those coming home? What the heck has Elon Musk done now? In addition to all the latest and greatest in space exploration, we'll take an occasional look at bits of spaceflight history that you probably never heard of, and all with an eye towards having a good time along the way. Check us out in your favorite podcatcher.